So hello everyone once again. Thank you for joining in. And it's so nice to have uh, you guys uh, starting with us uh, for this uh, webinar. Um, so let's go straight into it. Uh, bonjour à toutes et à tous. Merci de votre participation. Et c'est vraiment super uh, que vous avez pu dégager votre temps pour uh, le webinar traditionnel de la DEF. Euh, donc, euh, je suis très heureuse de, de vous accueillir euh, à, à ce, ce webinaire et à être consacré au sujet de l'Afrique en, en Europe, euh, les tendances, les, les solutions, euh, les points qui, qui sont en train de se Donc, euh, ce webinaire, il va être euh, aujourd'hui animé. Euh, par adepte avec euh, l'intervenant principal de Bi Ario, qui euh, est la fondatrice euh, d'une euh, organisation qui s'appelle Africa, Africans Unite Against Child Abuse, qui est une euh, fondation qui est basée à Londres, qui est basée en Grande-Bretagne. Donc, je m'appelle Nella Motru, euh, je suis euh, la chargée de communication et d'engagement. Chabet, et uh, je serai uh, celui qui va animer ce webinaire. So, we are very happy to talk to you at the very last webinar uh, on the trafficking in human beings from Africa to Europe, trends, issues, and solutions. The webinar, which is organized in partnership with Africa, is the Africans Unite Against Child Abuse. Um, Nelly, il y a beaucoup de vent derrière. Uh, je ne sais pas. Uh, uh, Debbie, I don't know, those of you, could you please uh, deactivate your micro uh, and then activate it once you're speaking. Debbie, maybe you also can, can deactivate your micro uh, because we hear a lot of noise. Okay. You, um, you just click on the, on the green micro button to deactivate it and then, okay. So can you hear? Uh, are you hearing better now? Okay. I hope so. Okay, yes. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go in. Uh, so I've been talking about Africa. Africa is Africans United, uh, uh, Africans, sorry, Unite Against Child Abuse, the first charity which is working to protect and promote the rights of African children in the UK and who is also a member of ADEPT. My name is Nelly Madruk and I'm the Communications and Engagement Officer at ADEPT and I will be your today's host. Uh, before we enter into the meat of the webinar, uh, I will just take you through some technical points. First of all, I would like really to ask you to keep your microphones muted and unmute them when the floor for discussions and exchanges is open by clicking on the microphone button on the chat box in front of your name. Also, feel free to use the chat box for any questions and comments as you did just before uh, during the whole webinar. We can see them and we will proactively address during the webinar and during the questions and answers session after the presentations. And last but not least, as we have both English and French speaking participants, we will provide consecutive translation from English to French and vice versa. Donc je vais juste vous présenter quelques points techniques d'abord. Euh, je vous demanderai vraiment de garder vos microphones inactifs et de les réactiver lors de la session des questions-réponses qu'on va avoir à la fin de présentation en cliquant sur le bouton de micro situé dans le chat des discussions en face de votre nom. En outre, n'hésitez aussi pas d'utiliser le chat pour poser toutes questions ou faire des commentaires pendant le webinaire. Nous pouvons les voir et nous, nous les aborderons de manière proactive pendant le webinaire et lors de la session des questions-réponses après les présentations. Et enfin, comme nous avons des participants anglophones et francophones, nous fournirons une traduction consécutive de l'anglais au français et vice-versa. Euh, pour ceux de vous qui sont un peu nouveaux euh, à ADEPT et euh, à ce type d'activité qui est le webinaire euh, mensuel d'ADEPT, donc ADEPT c'est la plateforme Afrique Europe euh, de développement des organisations de la diaspora qui est, est une plateforme parapluie qui vise à rassembler, à réunir, à renforcer, à accompagner euh, les organisations de la diaspora africaine qui sont euh, 
euh, établi qui travaille dans les 28 pays de l'Union européenne, en Norvège et en Suisse, et qui, euh, bien évidemment, sont engagés dans des actions de développement en Afrique. So for those of you who are new to ADEPT and uh, to the ADEPT webinar, ADEPT is the Africa Europe Diaspora Development Platform, which is an umbrella platform which aims at gather together a company, strengthen, enhance the capacity and impact of the African diaspora development organizations based in 28 EU countries, plus Norway and plus Switzerland, and who are engaged, of course, in the development actions in Africa. And uh, we are doing uh, the monthly webinars uh, together with different uh, ADEPT partners, ADEPT members, um, different development actors in order to provide specific knowledge, technical expertise on different issues related to migration and development. Et le webinaire mensuel de ADEPT sont destinés à fournir des connaissances, de l'expertise technique très pointue et très spécifique qui est relative aux questions de la migration et de développement. Et bien évidemment aussi de la diaspora. Uh, during the today's webinar, we will touch upon the issue of human trafficking in general with a special focus on trafficking from Africa to Europe. The topic is of high importance to ADEPT and its members as trafficking in persons happens when people face vulnerable situations, such as extreme poverty, human rights violations, crisis and conflicts, forced, mi forced migration. For instance, the current situation of African migrants in Libya is an opportunity for traffickers to get people into the trafficking circle, use their vulnerability and exploit them with different purpose, like for labor and domestic, uh, domestic exploitation, sexual and prostitution, organ, organ removal, begging. The victims of trafficking can be men, women and children, and this hidden crime is very difficult to identify, to report and prosecute. That is why more knowledge and understanding of the topic, its trends and challenges needs to be generated and circulated in order to better work together to address it. In the today's webinar, we will try to see together what we, African diaspora, can do in Europe and in Africa to address it. For this, we will have the founder and the CEO of Africa, uh, Debbie Ariwa, who is also the board member of ADEPT, um, as the main speaker. Debbie, thank you for joining uh, us and thank you for your time uh, and for, for being uh, the main speaker of this webinar and for sharing your, your knowledge. Au cours du webinaire d'aujourd'hui, nous aborderons la question de l'attrait des êtres humains en général en mettant un accent particulier sur l'attrait d'Afrique en Europe. Le sujet rêvait d'une grande importance pour adeptes et ses membres car l'attrait des personnes se produit lorsque des personnes sont confrontées à des situations de vulnérabilité telles que la pauvreté extrême, euh, la violation, les violations des droits de l'homme, euh, des crises et des conflits, des migrations forcées, Par exemple, la situation actuelle des migrants africains à Libye offre aux trafiquants une possibilité euh, incroyable d'intégrer ces personnes vulnérables dans les cercles des trafiquants, d'utiliser leur vulnérabilité et de les exploiter à des fins différentes, peut-être exploitation par le travail, euh, le travail du mystique, l'exploitation sexuelle et la prostitution, le prélèvement d'organes, la maldicité, essentiellement pour les enfants. Les victimes de la traite peuvent être des hommes, des femmes ou des enfants, et ce crime caché est très difficile à identifier, à signaler et à poursuivre. C'est la raison pour laquelle il est nécessaire aujourd'hui de générer et de diffuser davantage des connaissances et des compréhensions sur le sujet, ces tendances et ces défis afin de mieux travailler ensemble pour le résoudre. Dans le webinaire d'aujourd'hui, nous allons essayer de voir ensemble avec vous ce que nous, la diaspora africaine, pouvons faire en Europe et en Afrique pour euh, y remédier. Pour cela, nous allons avoir Debbie Arimou, la fondatrice et la directrice de la Fondation Afuka, qui est aussi l'administratrice des adeptes. Donc, euh, Debbie, euh, sois la bienvenue et merci beaucoup pour ton temps et surtout pour... Euh, pour ta disponibilité de partager uh, tes connaissances incroyables dans ce domaine. Uh, so, uh, Debbie, you have the floor, uh, and uh, I will remain here for the translation in French. 
maybe you can activate your micro just to start the... can you all hear me good afternoon everyone yeah. we can good hear afternoon. you okay so the presentation will be in three parts the first part i'm going to talk very briefly about uh, the work of africa in relation to trafficking in human beings and our work is uk focused so i'm going to talk a little bit about our work then we're going to explore uh, human trafficking itself. What does it mean? What does it happen? What are some of the key issues involved in that? Uh, how does trafficking impact on the victims? And exactly why are people trafficking from Africa to Europe? And then thirdly, we're going to explore some of the challenges, uh, current challenges in relation to addressing trafficking. And then we're going to discuss some recommendations uh, in relation to addressing trafficking. So I'm going to start by looking at our work at Africa. The charity started in 2001, and uh, we are one of the very few uh, African diaspora organizations working on human trafficking issues in the UK, which is, in itself is a, is a problem because it means that even though we have a high incidence of human trafficking from Africa to the UK, we don't have enough diaspora organizations who are engaged in this issue. So that's one key thing. So we work in different areas. We provide uh, services for children and young people who have been trafficked to access vital services in a culturally appropriate and adaptive manner. So we try to ensure that our responses is actually culturally sensitive to the needs of the young people that we're working with. These young people are from different parts of Africa. And since we started in 2001, we've worked with over 500 young people, individual support for them, or group, group uh, sessions, group support, but most especially in the provision of mental health support and advocacy support for the young people. Uh, we work with young people from over 20 different African countries over the past 18 years. And most of our users have been trafficked and or exploited for domestic slavery and sexual exploitation. Actually, most of our users have been exploited for sexual uh, slavery. So that is an issue. Most of our users are girls, and the average age is 12 years old. So I don't know if you want to translate that, Nelly. Nelly? Yes, of course. Um, Zoom. Okay. We, yes, can you hear me? Yeah. OK. Donc, euh, pour commencer euh, le webinaire, euh, je voudrais bien commencer d'abord par euh, présenter un peu la fondation qui s'appelle Afruka, qui travaille contre la traite des êtres humains. C'est une première organisation euh, de, carité, de carité qui travaille euh, dans le domaine de la protection, de la promotion des droits des enfants africains au Royaume-Uni. Il faut savoir que, bien évidemment, il y a beaucoup de diasporas euh, dans ce pays, mais il y a très peu des organisations de la diaspora africaine qui travaillent sur le sujet de, de, du trafic, de la traite des êtres humains. Et donc, euh, en tant que telle, cette fondation est fournie, euh, elle accorde un lieu aux enfants et aux de la traite, euh, qui sont aussi exploités euh, par... Euh, donc, elle offre un service, de, un set de services euh, essentiels euh, qui sont euh, adaptés à leur culture, qui sont euh, adaptés à leurs besoins, euh, parce que les enfants, ils viennent des différents pays, et bien évidemment, les codes culturels sont différents. Donc, les services qu'Afrocan propose euh, tiennent compte de, de ces spécialités. Euh, L'Afroca a été... There is still something briefing in line. OK, Elizabeth, thank you. Um, I will ask all of you to, to mute your micro so we can, uh, we can uh, hear better. I don't know. Um, okay. Is it better now? Yeah. Baby, can you also un, uh, mute your micro when you're not speaking and then unmute? I don't know from where the problem is coming, but I will just try to sort out. Um, okay. 
Is it better now? I hope so. Okay, so shall we continue? Thank you. Um, donc, uh, Afroka a été créée en 2001 et depuis sa création, elle a aidé plus de 500 victimes de la traite et en fournissant un soutien individuel qui est bien évidemment taillé euh, aux besoins euh, des enfants et qui est aussi axé sur les besoins pratiques en matière de santé mentale et de défense des de droits de l'homme. Afroka aussi travaille avec des enfants et des jeunes victimes de la traite et de l'esclavage moderne qui vient de à peu près 20 pays africains. Et la plupart des bénéficiaires de Afroka sont des victimes de la traite et d'exploitation par l'esclavage domestique et l'exploitation sexuelle. Aussi, il faut savoir que la plupart des bénéficiaires euh, sont des filles et leur âge moyen est de 12 ans. Donc, c'est aussi important de, de savoir euh, quel, quel, est, quel est le profil de, de ces personnes. Debbie Ok. So, um, to move on. Yes. So, um, so, most of our users are girls. And the average age at trafficking is 12 years old by the time these young people are rescued on average they are 21 years old so most young people will spend between eight and nine years uh, as victims of trafficking we work with various agencies to enhance protection for these young people in various ways so for example by uh, various partnerships referrals to Africa services or Africa referring your people to other services as I'm posting them to other services. But apart from victim support, we do a lot of community education and mobilization. So for example, last year we worked with the UK Home Office and we collaborated with a team of filmmakers to produce a film on domestic slavery uh, in the Nigerian community across uh, across England. We have also worked uh, with other people to uh, help bring offenders to justice or to take legal action against statutory agencies and actually have a case study that I will share with you on that uh, a bit later. We also do work around policy influencing research, training and advocacy uh, involving statutory agencies, bigger charities or other charities, and agencies that work on human trafficking and modern slavery issues, especially in relation to African countries. So I think uh, in, in a nutshell, that's our work across the UK. Nelly. Yep. Uh, donc il faut savoir que la plupart des bénéficiaires d'Afroca sont des filles et donc l'âge moyen quand elles sont, euh, elles entrent dans ce cercle est de 12 ans et donc l'âge moyen euh, au moment des sauvetages ou d'évasion, il est de 21 ans. Donc euh, ça fait 9 ans d'exploitation et c'est juste incroyable comment c'est comment possible à nos jours. Euh, il faut savoir qu'Afroca travaille également avec des agences, des différents types d'agences pour améliorer la protection de ces enfants et de ces jeunes de différentes manières. Euh, notamment, elle établit, elle travaille en partenariat avec les différents acteurs. Elle fait le référencement et elle, euh, elle fait aussi l'accès aux différents types de services disponibles à travers les différentes structures et organisations euh, euh, dans le pays. Il faut savoir qu'à part l'assistance directe aux victimes, elle fait aussi beaucoup d'éducation et des mobilisations communautaires. Par exemple, il y a un travail entamé récemment avec la Home Office britannique et une collaboration avec des producteurs de films sur l'esclavage domestique dans les communautés nigériennes. Euh, Afroca travaille aussi dans le domaine des poursuites euh, légales, dans la poursuite juridique euh, des trafiquants et dans ce sens, elle travaille beaucoup avec les forces de l'ordre pour amener les trafiquants en justice et en tenter des actions, de, donc une action en justice contre les organismes statutaires pour la négligence professionnelle. 
Finalement, elle travaille aussi au niveau d'influence, euh, au niveau des politiques, de recherche, de formation et de plaidoyer qui, euh, qui implique aussi ces agences statutaires, qui travaille aussi beaucoup avec des organisations caritatives euh, qui s'occupent euh, des, des questions de la traite des êtres humains, de l'esclavage moderne dans les différents pays africains. En gros, il y a un lien très fort avec les, avec les pays africains, ce qui, ce qui voilà, explique un peu le mandat que l'Afrika a. So, Go on, baby. Uh, thank you. So, now let's look at human trafficking because without having a clear understanding, we cannot really talk much about it. Now, Article 3 of the UN Protocol to prevent suppress and punish trafficking in persons, especially women and children, gives a very clear uh, definition of human trafficking. I'm going to read it out. It's a bit long, but please bear with me. Now, before I read it, let me just say that there are three parts to it. I'll try and point out a different part as I'm reading it. So the first part is about trafficking in persons shall mean the recruitment, the transportation, the transfer, the harboring or receipt of persons, and that's the first part, by means of the threat or use of force or other forms of coercion, of abduction, of fraud, of deception, the abuse of power or of a position of vulnerability or of the giving or receiving of payments or benefits to achieve the consent of a person having control over another person for the purpose of exploitation. So exploitation shall include at a minimum the exploitation of the prostitution of others or other forms of sexual exploitation, forced labor or services, slavery, or practices similar to slavery, servitude, or the removal of organs. So that's Article 3 of the UN Protocol, and it's also known as the Palermo Protocol. It's called the Palermo Protocol because it was signed and agreed in Palermo in Italy. So Nelly, I don't know if you want to translate that, please. Sure. Donc, euh, avant d'entrer vraiment dans le vif du sujet, il faut d'abord comprendre le sujet et donc il faut d'abord comprendre qu'est-ce qu'est le trafic humain. Et euh, pour ça, on a l'article 3 du protocole des Nations Unies euh, visant à prévenir, réprimer et punir la traite des personnes, en particulier des femmes et des enfants. Et donc, euh, c'est une, euh, une définition un peu longue, mais on va la lire. Donc, on entend cette définition, elle reprend trois différentes parties. J'ai vu un écho, je ne sais pas si ça vient de moi ou pas. Euh, ok, donc j'espère non. Euh, je vous continue. Donc, la traite des personnes, c'est le recrutement, le transport, le transfert, l'hébergement ou l'accueil des personnes. Tout, euh, donc, c'est la première partie sous la menace de recours à la force ou à d'autres formes de contraintes, d'enlèvement, de fraude, de tromperie, d'abus de pouvoir ou d'une position de vulnérabilité ou de l'octroi ou de versement de paiement ou davantage pour obtenir le consentement d'une personne ayant le contrôle sur une autre personne à des fins d'exploitation. Donc ça, c'est la deuxième partie. L'exploitation comprend au minimum l'exploitation à des fins de prostitution, d'autrui ou d'autres formes d'exploitation sexuelle, du travail ou des services forcés, l'esclavage ou des pratiques analogues à l'esclavage, la servitude ou le prélèvement d'organes. Ça, c'est la troisième partie. Il faut savoir que ce, euh, ce protocole, il s'appelle aussi le protocole de Palerme, euh, parce qu'il était signé en Italie, en Palerme, et c'est un document de base et des références euh, pour euh, parler du sujet de la Go on, Debbie. I think somebody has their microphone on, so it's a... Uh, yes. uh, let me see. Yeah? I can... 
We have Gislaine with the microphone next to you. Gislaine, could you please deactivate the microphone? We hear a lot of the ground noise. It's really okay. So thank you. So uh, the next slide is a diagram to simplify this this definition. So like I said before, there are three key elements of uh, trafficking. The first element is the act of trafficking, the action. We, and that action very good, but I think it's really bad, eh? Hello? Yeah, it's really bad. So can you please... Uh, Lana, you 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 the yes? Okay, donc euh, je essayais de couper moi aussi. Est-ce que vous attendez mieux maintenant? Yeah, I think it's better now. Yeah, it's better now. So it's okay. a meal. Okay. Yeah. So now, yeah, if you look at the, that very long definition, okay, there are three parts to it. No, yeah, yeah, there are three parts. The first part is the action. And that action is the recruitment, the transportation, the transfer, the harboring or receipt of persons, okay? That's that's the action. The means involves using a uh, force, other forms of coercion, abduction, fraud, deception, the abuse of power or a position of vulnerability, or the giving or receiving of payment of or, or benefits to achieve the consent of a person having control over another person. Okay. And the exploitation, of course, is what happens after all this. So these are the three key parts of trafficking. And this actually involves adults because when it comes to children, it's a different scenario altogether. Okay, shall I translate? Donc, on, on essaie de transposer la définition du protocole de, de Palerme en action, donc ce qu'on voit, donc il y a trois, donc trois types de processus, donc il y a l'action et par l'action, on entend vraiment tout ce qui est le recrutement, la transport, la trans, euh, la trans, euh, le transport, l'hébergement euh, des victimes euh, de, de, de trafic par les moyens, donc on entend tout ce qui est euh, euh, donc euh, les les, mens donc les, les mensonges, tout ce qu'on entend, le recrutement par le mensonge, par, euh, par euh, d'autres par types de, de, des actions qui ne sont pas forcément des actions euh, volontaires de la personne. Et après l'exploitation, bah, par l'exploitation, on a vu peut-être une exploitation par... Euh, à des fins sexuelles, domestiques, euh, etc., etc. Donc tout ça, c'est aussi réplicable au niveau des enfants. Mais il faut savoir que les enfants ne donnent pas leur accord, ils ne peuvent pas donner un accord euh, explicite pour, euh, pour ce type euh, d'action. Debbie, go on. Where it concerns children, there's one important thing to bear in mind. Children by law, cannot give informed consent. They cannot agree to be trafficked. Children cannot agree or give their consent to be abused. And the reason under the law is simply because children do not have the knowledge to make that decision. So when it comes to trafficking, just like other forms of abuse, the means of trafficking doesn't really count for children. What's important is that they were recruited, they were trafficked, and they were exploited. Whether they agree, whether they were deceived, whether they say yes, whether their parents say yes, is totally irrelevant. Recruitment, trafficking, exploitation. That's what child trafficking means. Nelly? Yeah. Donc, euh, pour la traite des enfants, il faut savoir que euh, ce phénomène, il est un peu 
euh, différent, tout simplement parce que euh, les enfants ne peuvent pas donner leur consentement éclairé euh, pour... Ils ne peuvent pas prendre une décision tout simplement parce qu'ils n'ont pas des connaissances suffisantes de la cause pour pouvoir dire oui ou non. Donc, euh, donc l'action de recrutement, l'action de... de d'exploitation de, aussi, elle a lieu que ce soit avec ou, ou sans le consentement de l'enfant, tout simplement parce que ce consentement, il n'est pas pris, euh, donc la décision d'un de, 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 enfant, même s'il dit oui, elle ne peut pas être prise en compte tout simplement parce qu'il ne sait pas à quoi il a dit oui. Donc, euh, il faut savoir que le cas des enfants, il est un peu particulier euh, à cause de, de ce moment. Go on, Debbie. Now, let's look at the differences between trafficking and smuggling because many times you will see people use them, you know, interchangeably. They're very different. So let's explore what trafficking means and what smuggling means when we talk about migration, okay? So first of all, when we talk about trafficking, it is a crime against a human being. That's why it's called trafficking in human beings. It's the crime against the person. When we talk about smuggling, it's a crime against a country, against the state. What you're doing is illegal. Trafficking too is illegal, but it's a crime against a human being, or smuggling is a crime against the state. Trafficking is involuntary or forced. There's always exploitation after the action and the means that we talked about just now. But with, with smuggling, it's voluntary. You pay somebody to move you across borders. Once they move you across borders, you're free to go. Okay, so that's the difference. Trafficking can be domestic or internal. So you hear people say internal trafficking. That's trafficking within one country It can also be international trafficking from one country to another. But smuggling is always across borders. You smuggle somebody from one country to another country. And you do that because it's difficult for them to move, to migrate. So you, this, you, you, know, you smuggle them, they're smuggled. With trafficking, There's always an ongoing relationship between the trafficker, uh, between the trafficked and the, uh, and the trafficker. You're, they're still there, they're still, the abuse is still going on, the exploitation is still going on, the enslave, enslavement is still happening. But with smuggling, you pay them to move you from country A to country B. When you get to country B, that's it, that's the end of the transaction. That's you're finished with that. With trafficking, there's ongoing gain from the exploitation. So when you're using a child as a domestic servant, you're gaining from them. As long as you're exploiting them, you're, you're making a gain, a, a benefit. With smuggling, you pay them, they take you to your destination, and that's it. The gain ends with the arrival. Nobody can willingly give their consent to be trafficked. So it's important to understand with trafficking, there is no consent. But with smuggling, is a transaction. There's an agreement. I pay you to take me to country B. You take me to country B, and that's it. However, we're seeing a lot of issues happening in Libya now and in Niger. What's happening is that many migrants are paying uh, people to help smuggle them. But that smuggling is now very, very hidden because of all the different laws that, that have been put in place. So people who are being trafficked, uh, so people, people who are being smuggled are actually ending up becoming victims of trafficking. The people who are smuggling them, who they think will help them to move from country A to country B are actually selling them to traffickers. Many of the, many of the people 
who have been enslaved in Libya, for example, were migrants. They pay people to help smuggle them into Libya, but unfortunately, they've actually ended up being trafficked and then being, uh, being locked up, being used as slaves. So th those are the differences between trafficking and smuggling. I hope that's clear. Thank you, Debbie. Donc, pour traduire, euh, quel il y a une, quelle est la différence entre la contrebande et, euh, et le, le trafic qui sont toujours liés à la migration vers l'Europe? Euh, donc, il faut savoir que le trafic, c'est euh, avant tout une crime contre la personne. Ça veut dire que la personne euh, qui est la victime du trafic euh, est c'est une victime, donc c'est la personne qui souffre, qui subit euh, les actions de, de trafic euh, sans vraiment donner du consentement pour ça. Euh, quand il s'agit de la contrebande, c'est une crime contre l'État. Ça veut dire que c'est une personne X qui traverse euh, les, les différents pays, les différentes frontières et qui, eh bien évidemment, n'est pas en règle avec les, les, euh, le règlement de ce pays. Le trafic, il est involontaire ou forcé, donc il y a une exploitation après le mouvement. Euh, donc, ça veut dire que euh, c'est une action dont la personne n'a pas donné son accord et il y a toujours un, une fin particulière, donc c'est toujours fait à, pour une raison précise, que ce soit une exploitation par, euh, par l'emploi le, forcé, euh, exploité, euh, sexuel, etc. La contrebande, elle est volontaire. Ça veut dire que la personne, elle a donné son accord, et donc elle veut traverser euh, les frontières d'un pays. Et euh, une fois qu'elle a, travers, a traversé le pays A ou le pays B, elle est libre après ce mouvement. Le trafic, il peut être euh, interne ou international. Ça veut dire que le trafic peut se passer euh, sur le territoire d'un pays, euh, disons euh, une personne elle est euh, trafiquée euh, d'une région A vers une région B d'un même pays euh, et ce peut être international aussi d'un pays A vers un pays B. En tant que contrebande, c'est tout le temps international. Donc il y a toujours euh, un, donc un mouvement euh, pour euh, à, à travers euh, plusieurs euh, ou au moins un pays euh, qui, qui a lieu. Le trafic, il y a toujours une relation en cours avec le trafiquant ou l'exploitation. Ça veut dire qu'il y a toujours un lien entre, en fait, entre la victime et le trafiquant parce que euh, c'est lié. Donc, euh, c'est un système comme ça. En tant que la contrebande, donc c'est la transaction qui se termine à l'arrivée. Ça veut dire que la personne X qui veut traverser euh, un pays Y, elle paye, euh, elle paye un, un trafiquant pour pouvoir le transporter. Euh, et une fois arrivée vers, vers son point de destination, elle paye la personne et après, elle est libre. Euh, le trafic, il y a toujours un gain de l'exploitation en cours, donc il y a toujours un bénéfice que le trafiquant reçoit suite à cette exploitation. La contrebande, le gain, il se termine à l'arrivée. Ça veut dire que la personne, une fois arrivée sur place d'un PIB, elle paye euh, la personne qui l'a transportée. Pour le trafic, il n'y a jamais du consentement. Euh, je pense que n'importe quelle personne en bon, en bon raison et en bonne santé ne, ne donnera jamais son accord pour pouvoir, euh, pour pouvoir subir ce que les victimes subissent. En contrebande, il y a toujours un accord. Donc, euh, dans certains des cas, euh, des contrebandes, et, euh, ça peut conduire à la traite et au kidnapping. Et c'est justement le cas de des beaucoup de migrants euh, qui sont à Libye et au Niger qui essayent justement de traverser des frontières pour pouvoir arriver en Europe ou à un autre pays africain. Et donc, du coup, ces migrants tombent dans, dans ce cercle des, des contrebandistes et euh, qui, qui payent des sommes incroyables pour pouvoir traverser des frontières d'une manière euh, irrégulière, tout simplement parce que la législation elle est tellement c'est tellement durci ces derniers temps que il n'y a pas d'autre moyen que, que de, de faire ça et du coup euh, c'est aussi une malheureusement euh, une euh, il tombe dans, dans le trafic euh, à cause de ça 
Go on, Debbie. Uh, Nelly. So Debbie. Well, let's move on yeah. now. We'll move on. Trafficking in the global context. So we've already looked at the definition. It's a movement of people for the purposes of exploitation and abuse. Human trafficking is actually the fastest growing international crime with an estimated profit of over 100 billion pounds every year. So it's a huge, huge uh, operation. Estimated 45 million people held modern slavery today all over the world. Uh, 10 million of those are children. And Africa has one of the highest numbers of children who have been trafficked to the UK and I guess to Europe uh, as well. So I keep talking about the UK because obviously we're based in the UK, but a lot of the issues that we're seeing in the UK are also uh, experienced by other countries uh, in Europe. Nelly. OK. Donc, euh, si on prend euh, le trafic dans le contexte global, il faut savoir que le, on a vu déjà le trafic des êtres humains, c'est un, une transportation, un mouvement euh, de personnes pour euh, les euh, besoins d'exploitation de, ou d'abus. Euh, le trafic des êtres humains, c'est euh, une, une crime internationale qui euh, génère des bénéfices de plus de 100 milliards euh, de, de, fonds, de, fonds, de pounds euh, euh, anglais euh, par année. Donc, vous pouvez vous imaginer à quel point point ce business est profitable, il y a à peu près 45 millions de personnes qui sont aujourd'hui les victimes de, de, de trafic euh, et c'est juste imaginable. Il y a 10 millions de ces personnes qui sont des enfants et il faut savoir que l'Afrique est là le plus grand nombre des enfants victimes euh, du trafic euh, qui sont euh, dans, en Angleterre. On a mis le focus à Angleterre tout simplement parce que Africa est l'opère dans ce pays et donc il y a beaucoup plus de connaissances de, euh, liées au contexte, mais il faut savoir que c'est aussi une situation de beaucoup d'autres pays euh, dans le monde. So. How many people are trafficked from Africa to Europe? Some countries in Europe have their own figures. So in the UK, for example, we do have figures, and I'll talk about, about that in a bit. However, in 2017, IOM, which is the International Organization for Migration, did uh, a scoping exercise in Italy. They, they were trying to... Uh, uh, determine most of the migrants coming on the boats to Italy, why they're coming. They want to know if they've been trafficked or not. And they did a research and out of about 11,000 women, just counting the women only, out of about 11,000 women who were arriving by sea, 80% of them, 80% were actually determined to be victims of trafficking. That's a huge number, that's just Italy. Italy is not the only entry point into Europe. There are other entry points. So for example, by plane or by train, but most people in recent years have been coming through the Mediterranean Sea via uh, Italy or maybe other countries like Malta or Spain. But most of those people were actually ending up in Italy, as you see from the IOM research. In the UK, we've seen, and at Africa, we've worked with over people from 20 different African countries, but at the least, there are people from 34 countries in Africa, including at the highest is Nigeria, of course, followed by Eritrea, Sudan, Ethiopia, Ghana and other countries, not just in West Africa, but even you know in the Horn of Africa. And trafficking from Africa to Europe actually mirrors what's happening globally. So for example, we know that 
of victims of trafficking are women. So women are most likely to be trafficked. 25% of trafficked Africans, for example, are children, children under the age of 18 years. 21% are men. So in the past, people tend to think that only women and children are trafficked. And that men are just uh, migrants. They're just trying to, you know, to look for a better life. But actually, we know now that 21% of victims of trafficking from Africa to Europe are actually men. And that's quite a high figure. Nelly. Okay. Donc, euh, pour regarder un tout petit peu en profondeur des chiffres, euh, de, donc sur les, le nombre de victimes du trafic qui vient d'Afrique en Europe, il faut savoir qu'en 2017, l'Organisation internationale pour l'immigration, qui est une agence des Nations Unies spéci euh, spécialisée sur les questions d'immigration, elle a mené une étude sur les côtes italiennes euh, sur les migrants qui sont arrivés euh, par la route méditerranéenne en Europe vers, euh, depuis l'Afrique et donc euh, il y a donc cette étude elle a visé euh, 11 009 euh, femmes donc étude des cas euh, de femmes qui arrivaient par la mer et donc ils ont vu que 80 euh, 80% de ces femmes donc euh, sont des, des victimes en fait des victimes de, de, de la traite au Royaume-Uni euh, les victimes euh, viennent de à peu près 34 pays africains. Euh, avec au top, nous avons la, la Nigeria, nous avons Érythrée, Soudan, Éthiopie et Ghana. Il faut savoir aussi que euh, la traite euh, qui vient, donc la traite d'Afrique à destination de l'Europe reflète les tendances mondiales un tout petit peu. La grande majorité, la, la moitié euh, déjà sont, et notamment 55% sont des femmes. Euh, il y a 25% des, des Africains qui sont victimes de la traite, euh, qui sont des mineurs euh, à l'âge de moins de 21 ans, et euh, 21% sont des hommes. Et euh, c'est aussi, donc, euh, ces chiffres nous, nous démontrent en fait qu'un stéréotype qui est très souvent utilisé, selon lequel c'est juste les femmes et les enfants sont victimes, c'est un stéréotype, c'est une fausse, une idée, une idée fausse qui doit être détruite parce que euh, il y a beaucoup d'hommes qui sont exploités et malheureusement euh, c'est la réalité qu'on doit aussi adresser et dont on doit tenir compte. Go on, Debbie. Now, now let's look at the reasons why people are trafficked for uh, from Africa to Europe. So we know that. When you look at our country, the UK, and you look at Spain or Italy, a high number of victims are trafficked for forced labor. And forced labor can include working on construction sites or uh, other forms of forced labor. In, in our work at Africa, we have seen young people, who, as boys, who have been trafficked from Nigeria, Ghana, Cameroon, for example, to the UK, but we also know this is uh, something that's going on in France and Italy, because they've been told that if you come to Europe, I can help you, you can play football in Europe. So there are lots of young people are being trafficked, they've been deceived to come to Europe because they think they're coming to play football, but they're not coming to play football, they're coming to do other things. There are also cases of uh, people being trafficked to claim benefits. Uh, Social Security uh, in, the, in the UK, we know that many of the young people that we worked with who were trafficked for domestic, domestic slavery were also trafficked to claim benefits. So this is a phenomenon in the UK, in France. Sexual slavery is possibly the core issue that is happening all over Europe, almost all countries in Europe have women who, and, and, and sometimes men, who have been trafficked to be used as sex slaves. So about a month ago, I did, we were in uh, Brussels, uh, you know, where you are there, and we understand that if you go to Gare, around Gare du Nord in 
Brussels. There are lots of women there who have been used uh, as prostitutes. But most of these women really have been trafficked. And it's the case in Italy, uh, on the streets of Italy, all over Italy, in Spain, uh, in, in Austria, uh, all over Europe. In the UK, we don't have street prostitution. It's not allowed to uh, prostitute on the streets. So we have uh, brothels, hotels, and places like that where women have been used as uh, sexual slavery. So it's a huge sexual slavery is possibly the biggest problem in relation to trafficking uh, from Africa to Europe. In Italy and Spain, a form of forced labor is using is uh, using people from mainly North, uh, North Africa to work on the farms to help harvest tomatoes or strawberries and other fruits and vegetables. That is a growing problem as well, because not only are these uh, usually women being used for forced labor, they are also prone to being sexually exploited and physically abused as well. So human trafficking from Africa uh, into different parts of Europe is a big problem. There are many purposes, there are many reasons, and women and men and children are, are, are being caught up in it. Nelly. OK. Donc, euh, si on regarde sur les objectifs, sur la destination, donc pourquoi la traite des êtres humains a lieu depuis l'Afrique vers l'Europe, il faut savoir que les fins d'exploitation sont différentes. Donc, tout d'abord, c'est le travail forcé. Et par le travail forcé, on entend ici donc tout ce qui est le travail dans les, les constructions, les chantiers de construction, le travail domestique. Euh, et ça se passe dans beaucoup de pays euh, d'Europe, que ce soit l'Italie, l'Espagne, le Royaume-Uni. Euh, les jeunes sont essentiellement recrutés euh, par euh, genre euh, des promesses euh, des sports, euh, des activités sportives où euh, les jeunes sont euh, on, on reçoivent des propositions genre tu vas devenir un star de foot viens viens euh, avec nous et tout ça donc ce type d'exploitation est là aussi beaucoup dans le Royaume-Uni la France l'Italie il y a le fraude sur les bénéfices donc, c'est aussi tout ce qui est euh, des, des, des transactions un peu euh, financières euh, frauduleuses. Donc, euh, c'est aussi un Royaume-Uni à France. L'esclavage domestique, Royaume-Uni, France, mais aussi d'autres pays. Et euh, un, des, euh, un type d'exploitation qui prend vraiment euh, d'ampleur, euh, si on compare avec d'autres, c'est l'esclavage sexuel l'exploitation des faits sexuels euh, qui a eu en Italie, en Espagne, en France, au Royaume-Uni, Allemagne. Et la liste, elle est vraiment n'est pas exhaustive. Euh, C'est essentiellement les femmes qui sont recrutées, les jeunes filles, mais il y a aussi des cas des, des hommes. Et finalement, il y a l'exploitation sur les sites d'agriculture, ça veut dire tout ce qui est euh, les, le travail sur les fermes, des, sur la production des tomates, des, des fraises, des, c'est un peu le travail saisonnier, mais il y a beaucoup de, de femmes, des hommes, des, des des enfants qui travaillent sur ces fermes, qui recueillent euh, voilà, les, les, les fruits, les légumes que nous on mange et on ne sait pas euh, comment est-ce que euh, tout ça a été recueilli. Essentiellement, euh, ça a lieu en Italie, en Espagne, mais bien une, encore une fois, la liste n'est pas exhaustive. Euh, et euh, pour conclure, donc, le trafic des êtres humains, il touche non seulement les femmes, les jeunes filles, mais il touche aussi les hommes et les enfants. Et le trafic de l'Afrique vers l'Europe, c'est un, c'est un grand, vraiment un grand problème que qu'on a aujourd'hui. Euh, quand on parle de l'Europe, on parle vraiment de tous les pays euh, de l'Europe. Bon, Debbie. Thank you. Thanks, Nelly. So, why is trafficking growing? Why are we seeing more cases of of, of people being trafficked. So let's look at some of the push factors and the pull factors. So I'm going to start with the push factors. And just about two weeks ago, the UNDP, the United Nations uh, Development Agency, released a report on uh, what it called 
multidimensional poverty. So multidimensional poverty, it shows people living with multiple deprivation at the same time. So not just that they're living in extreme poverty, but they, 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 there's so many things that they lack, they do not have at the same time. Like for example, good housing, running water, electricity, waste management, and so on and so forth. So multidimensional. And this is a, a you know a, a real issue because almost all African countries are seeing a rise in the number of people living in multidimensional poverty. Poverty is the core reason why people are being trafficked. And apart from that, unemployment is a big factor, especially youth unemployment. Currently, over 16 million young people below the age of 25 are unemployed. So that's a huge figure. That, that's even more than the population of many countries. Climate change, uh, we're seeing the impact of climate change in many parts of Africa. Uh, the Lake Chad Basin in Nigeria, Chad and uh, Niger, for example, uh, that, that, that uh, Lake Chad used to be a, a, a very dynamic uh, you know, lake where people go for fishing, and, and you know, look after the animals and so on and so forth. That lake is almost dried up completely, which means that the people living there at this place, they are forced to move. And human trafficking is also a big factor. In South Sudan, in Central Africa, in the public, in Sudan, we're seeing conflict and dis displacement. When there is conflict and displacement, there's also trafficking because people capitalize on these uh, children who have been orphaned, young people who have been orphaned, women who don't have any ways of looking after themselves. So people take advantage of this situation to, um, to traffic uh, human beings. But one of the biggest factors really is government inefficiency. Is government inefficiency in relation to corruption. Corruption means that many services that should be provided for people are not being provided. Government inefficiency means that the uh, systems that should be put in place to protect children, to protect uh, women, to protect potential victims uh, are not being put in place. Government inefficiency also means that human rights abuses are very, very uh, common. Uh, you know, you can pick any country, say, for example, Nigeria, human rights abuses are very common in Nigeria. So these are some of the push factors that make it easy for people uh, to be deceived, to be uh, forced or coerced into trafficking. When we look at the pull factors, so push factors are the reason why people are, you know, pushed out. Pull factors are the attraction. Why are people? Why do? Why, why, why are people being trafficked into Europe? Why do they want to come to Europe? For us at Africa, a lot of the young people, and we've worked with over five hundred of them, and many of them, most of them even, were trafficked for domestic slavery. All these young people trafficked for domestic slavery. All of them were actually trafficked to work with their own people so they were not trafficked by foreigners they were not trafficked by uh, some you know uh, a white uh, person looking to make a game they were trafficked by their own people uh, debbie could uh, could you allow uh, Lily to translate the push factor first oh thank good a lot yeah. this is uh, thank okay. you okay yeah. no worries don't uh quand on parle de pourquoi la, la, euh, c'est un phénomène qui prend de l'ampleur, il y a deux types de facteurs d'influence. Donc d'abord, on va parler des facteurs d'incitation. Donc il faut savoir que la pauvreté multidimensionnelle, euh, c'est un des facteurs les plus importants. Et donc là, on regarde euh, clairement l'index global de PNUD, 
qui euh, montre qu'il y a les différents types de privation euh, auxquels les personnes sont confrontées en même, en même temps, euh, qui, euh, qui font en fait de ces personnes, euh, qui les exposent en fait et qui les rendent très vulnérables euh, à la traite. Et ce sont par exemple euh, le manque d'accès à l'eau, le manque de nourriture, le manque d'emploi, euh, la pauvreté, le manque d'argent, euh, l'insécurité totale. Quoi. Donc, et, mais euh, il faut savoir aussi que l'extrême pauvreté, c'est vivre en dessous de 1 dollar par jour. Euh, et donc, c'est voilà, le cas de beaucoup de personnes aujourd'hui, euh, surtout euh, au milieu de la jeunesse. Il faut savoir qu'aujourd'hui, il y a à peu près 16 millions de jeunes qui sont en dessous de 25 ans, qui sont, euh, qui sont sans emploi, sans futur, sans rien. Et de, donc, qui sont vraiment les, les victimes potentielles. De, 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 de trafic. Euh, il y a aussi le, le facteur qui est de changement climatique. Il faut savoir que euh, dans certaines régions, donc il y a euh, le, le, le principal, en fait, la principale activité, c'est l'agriculture, le développement rural. Et donc le changement climatique, bien évidemment, il impacte la possibilité des personnes de, de continuer ce type d'activité. Et donc ça entraîne un mouvement. Personnes. Et donc, à travers, donc, pendant ce type de mouvement, les personnes peuvent devenir des victimes de, de la traite. Il y a aussi un autre facteur qui, euh, qui est très important, ce sont les conflits de déplacement. Donc, on voit beaucoup euh, dans le cas des différents euh, conflits comme le, le, le sud du Soudan. Euh, donc, il y a beaucoup de, de femmes, il y a beaucoup de, de jeunes, il y a beaucoup d'enfants qui, qui restent seuls, qui restent sans protection, sans abri, euh, sans maison, sans, sans moyen de, de, de vivre, d'existence. Donc, de ce type d'éducation, de vulnérabilité. Pardon, elle expose ces personnes à, au trafic, à l'exploitation. Et finalement, il y a le, le facteur d'inefficacité du gouvernement. Donc, ça veut dire qu'il y a beaucoup de corruption euh, au, milieu, euh, au milieu des services donc, euh, qui doivent être, euh, euh, disons, je ne sais pas, les systèmes de protection sociale qui ne marchent pas, les services qui doivent être proposés, offerts aux personnes et qui ne le sont pas, manque de différents systèmes et de structures disponibles de, de, de systèmes sociaux, bien évidemment par l'enregistrement des de naissances, euh, le système de protection de l'enfance qui les expose vraiment et qui les font vraiment euh, un moyen euh, donc, euh, très facile pour les trafiquants de les attraper dans, dans ce cercle. Euh, disons quand un enfant n'a pas de certificat d'enregistrement, bah, il est enregistré nulle part. Donc, c'est un enfant idéal pour tomber, euh, pour être exploité, transporté et, 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 et tout ça. Donc, euh, voilà. Debbie, so I leave you for the, the poor factors. The poor, so, let's look at the poor factors now. So, I was talking about how a very high proportion of the young people who have been trafficked that we support at Africa were actually trafficked by their own people, members of their own diaspora communities. Some people will go home, back to the villages, to the towns, to attract young people. Oh, if you come with me, I will look after you. If you come with me, I will send you to school. If you come with me, you will have a, a better life. So we're seeing that all these young people end up in exploitation. So, Most of the young people, in fact, almost all the young people that we work, uh, work with at Africa who were trafficked for domestic slavery were actually, uh, you know, trafficked by people that they know. And it's the same with many of the young girls we see on the streets of Italy or Rome, uh, in Rome, Belgium, France, or even uh, other countries. Those young girls mainly trafficked by people called madams. Madams who have been through uh, exploitation, sexual exploitation themselves, who are, who are now free, they go back home to pick up girls so that they can also be trafficked. So it's a virtual cycle of abuse. It's a diaspora demand for, uh, for their own people to come in and, 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 uh, and work. 
So cheap labor is uh, another reason. So we see that mainly on the farms in uh, Italy and in Spain. Uh, even now with Brexit coming to the UK, we know that uh, the government is already asking for non-EU migrants to come to the UK to work on the farms because UK people are not going to work on the farms to pick the strawberries <laughs> and the tomatoes. So we need non-EU migrants. Non-EU migrants are very prone to also being exploited. We're already seeing that in Spain. We're already seeing that in Italy with the tomato industry, where a lot of migrants are being used uh, to pick tomatoes, but at the same time, they go through a lot of uh, abuses, they go through a lot of uh, exploitation. The better life syndrome, the, the, the idea that if I just get to Europe, I will have a better life. It means that a lot of young people are putting themselves at the hands of traffickers. They might not know, and this is where the consent comes in, they might not know what they will end up doing, but they, they allow themselves to be, uh, to be, uh, to be they, they think they're being uh, helped, but they're not being helped. They're actually being trafficked. So they end up in Italy, in the UK, in Spain, or which other country, and they realize that they've lost their freedom. Uh, what they thought was going to happen is not happening, and that their experiences is going to be in hell, really. So uh, the pull factors and the push factors are both responsible for the growth in human trafficking. Nelly. Yeah. Donc pour euh, nous tourner vers les facteurs d'attraction, donc il faut savoir que euh, comment se fait le recrutement, euh, comment se fait en fait, comment les personnes arrivent dans ce cercle. Euh, le recrutement des victimes, des potentielles victimes encore dans le cercle, se fait par des personnes qui euh, dont les victimes, dont ces potentielles victimes les connaissent. Donc, euh, il y a une demande de la part euh, de la diaspora. Ça, ça veut dire que euh, très souvent, ce sont des, des femmes qui étaient à l'époque, elles aussi, des victimes euh, de, de la traite, d'exploitation, de, du coup sexuel. Par exemple, on, on, on les appelle madame. Uh, ce sont des, des anciens victimes uh, um, qui ont été libérées à la fin d'exploitation et qui maintenant sont responsables de recruter des nouvelles personnes, des, 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 des jeunes filles du coup, uh, pour uh, les amener dans ce cercle. Il faut savoir que ce, cette connexion, elle s'est faite sur la base de, de la confiance parce que uh, il n'y a pas donc pour pouvoir pour que la personne puisse donner son pour puisse être recrutée il faut qu'elle ait confiance dans dans la personne qui la recrute et donc très souvent c'est des, des personnes qui sont de même milieu qui sont des mêmes communautés qui sont des mêmes de même contexte un peu culturel ou social pour pouvoir établir ce, cette confiance euh, il y a aussi euh, un d'autres facteurs comme la main d'œuvre euh, qui, euh, qui est très euh, de, de bas prix euh, parce que euh, ça on voit très souvent en Italie ou en Espagne euh, dans donc tout, tout ce travail sur les fermes qui se fait par les travailleurs euh, non euh, non euh, non européens euh, tout simplement parce que les travailleurs européens feront jamais ce type de travail ou le feront avec un prix euh, incroyable. Donc, c'est pourquoi, euh, pour pouvoir euh, avoir un profit euh, du business, et, et les, euh, les personnes, euh, donc les, les responsables de ces entreprises, font appel à des travailleurs non, non européens. Et du coup, voilà, c'est peut-être aussi des, des personnes euh, qui sont amenées euh, depuis, depuis l'Afrique. Il y a aussi le syndrome d'une meilleure vie et euh, c'est essentiellement euh, un facteur qui est très souvent, qui marche très bien avec la jeunesse, la jeunesse qui, qui aspire à beaucoup de choses, qui a beaucoup de euh, qui, qui a beaucoup de projets, qui veut faire beaucoup de choses, mais qui a 
très souvent peu de moyens. Et donc, euh, s'il euh, y a des promesses, si tu viens avec moi en Europe, euh, bah, tu vas avoir des études, tu vas avoir un bon job, tu vas avoir, euh, je ne sais pas, euh, plein de choses. Donc, très souvent, c'est ce type de promesses, euh, ce type d'illusion, en fait, que qui les trafiquants créent. Euh, devant les, les potentielles victimes pour les attraper dans ce cercle. Ok, all right. Thank Go you very much. Debbie. Thank you. So, uh, let's look at some of the trends uh, in relation to trafficking from uh, Africa to Europe. Italy has always been the key entry point. There's a lot happening in Italy now uh, with the government and uh, the EU trying to stop people uh, using the sea, the Mediterranean Sea, to reach uh, Italy. However, between 2015 and 2016, we, used, we saw a very high number, possibly the highest number of victims from West Africa and the Horn of Africa, especially Nigerian women and children, arriving in Italy. Between 2016 and now, uh, the number of West African victims has actually reduced. We're seeing more young, more young people from the Horn of Africa, from Sudan, from Eritrea, from Ethiopia. The Mediterranean Sea, uh, the Central Mediterranean Sea, is still the key entry point to Europe by sea. However, we're seeing something that we weren't seeing before in relation to trafficking and migration. North African migration to Europe is increasing. Before, people used to use Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria as transit points. But now, Moroccans, Algerians, Tunisians themselves are migrating, and many of them are victims of trafficking. Especially, like I said before, in relation to forced labor uh, uh, on the farms, in construction, and so on and so forth. At the same time, the EU, the European Union, has uh, done a lot to intervene to stop the movement of people by the sea. So, for example, in Libya, they've, they've, they've put a lot of money into Libya to pay the coastal guards to actually arrest any, uh, any boats and return the people on the boats to Libya. In, uh, in Niger, they've done very similar. They're working with the government of Niger. The EU is working with the government of Niger uh, to actually put in place laws. So all the Nigerian who would help to smuggle people from Niger to Libya, that's stopped now. They've stopped it. If you're caught smuggling people, you will go to prison in Niger. So it's a big problem, I'm sorry, in Niger. They've confiscated their trucks that they use, and it's a big problem. And I'll talk about the implications of all this as we go, as we go along. Uh, Nelly. Yeah. Okay, oh, sorry, I have just a second, I'm very sorry, the presentation. Um, okay, donc, uh, pour traduire uh, ce que Debbie vient de dire, il faut savoir que uh, L'Italie, donc pendant les, euh, les tendances actuelles. Donc il faut savoir que l'Italie, jusqu'à aujourd'hui, elle est considérée comme le point d'entrée euh, principal en, en Europe. Et euh, vous savez très bien qu'entre 2015 et 2016, il y, a le pic, il y avait le pic euh, de nombre d'entrées euh, depuis l'Afrique vers l'Europe. Euh, ce soit, disons, euh, entre guillemets, la crise migratoire dont tout le monde euh, parlait à l'époque. Euh, et donc, le nombre de victimes, euh, euh, surtout de l'Afrique de l'Ouest et de la Corne de l'Afrique, la, était très élevé. En particulier, c'était des femmes et des enfants nigériens. Euh, jusqu'à aujourd'hui, donc depuis 2016 jusqu'au présent, il y a toujours une augmentation euh, du nombre de victimes euh, en Afrique de l'Ouest et réduction du nombre de victimes dans la corne de l'Afrique. 
Et il faut aussi savoir que la route centrale de la Méditerranée, elle reste la route principale, euh, une porte d'entrée vers l'Europe euh, par la voie maritime. Euh, et bien évidemment, euh, entre-temps, les tendances changent. Et euh, si à l'époque, on entendait guerre euh, de, 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 de l'Afrique du Nord, euh, qui était le, le, le pays d'un voile maintenant, euh, qui était essentiellement à l'époque le pays des transits, là maintenant, il est devenu aussi le pays d'envoi. Donc la migration nord-africaine vers l'Europe augmente. Donc il y a les pays comme le Maroc, l'Algérie, la Tunisie, qui, euh, qui envoient beaucoup de personnes euh, en Europe, euh, essentiellement pour le, travail, euh, pour le travail saisonnier, dans les fermes des tomates, des fraises. Et donc il y a beaucoup d'exploitation par le travail, il y a aussi beaucoup d'abus. Euh, donc euh, dans, dans ce type de contexte. Il y a aussi un autre type, euh, il y a aussi un, un contexte et, et un point qui est très important qui caractérise euh, le trafic d'aujourd'hui, c'est qu'il y a les interventions de l'Union européenne au Niger et à Libye euh, des, sur tout ce qui est l'augmentation la, du nombre des, des contrôles frontières euh, par la voie maritime qui entraîne euh, une réduction euh, temporaire du nombre des passages en mer et des déplacements. Et donc, tout ça, ça fait que les personnes sont bloquées dans, dans ces pays et euh, ils, sont, ils sont très exposés à des différents types d'exploitation, que ce soit, je ne sais pas, sexuel, abus, que ce soit aussi euh, le travail, euh, le travail domestique. Euh, au Niger, euh, par exemple, euh, il y a des cas quand les personnes euh, locales, elles devaient aussi euh, faire du, bah, du recrutement pour pouvoir euh, assurer euh, leur, euh, leur existence. Euh, malheureusement, c'est les, les conséquences de, de cette politique hein, qui, euh, qui a cet angle sécuritaire de, de stopper les, les migrations à tout prix. Et donc, la conséquence, c'est la perte des les souffrances des, des humains, euh, que ce soit dans les différents points de transit, de, de destination ou d'origine. Go on, Debbie. Thank you very much, Nelly. So, let's look at some of key issues that uh, you know uh, human trafficking is is freeing up for us some of the issues that we're seeing and this the key issue well the, one of the key issues is in terms of uh, trafficking for exploitation and i've called it the italian connection the italian connection because it seems like italy once once the um once the victims get to italy as as the as the as the first uh, point of contact they are able to get dispersed all across europe most victims go to italy first like yeah, most most victims for sexual exploitation they go to italy first before we, they come to the uk they end up in france uh, in spain in uh, in belgium and so on and so forth so i've called that the italian connection the direct link with the Italy. The second point, uh, I, I've called it black women who are seen as exotic commodities in Europe. Because when we look at the high number of uh, black women uh, in different uh, European cities, I mean, I've seen it, I've, I've been in many countries in Europe, and I'm like, you know, it, 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 the, the people, who will go to uh, to to victims uh, or, or to to people they think are prostitutes? They're not black men. They they they're white men mainly, or, or men from other uh, uh, other races. So there seems to be a special interest in black women uh, as exotic commodities. Uh, you know that people can uh, patronize. There's also the issue of proximity to Europe. Of course, the North Af Af African angle comes into play because North Africa is the exit point in Africa. Once you leave North Africa, you cross the sea, you're ending up in Europe. The proximity between Africa, especially North Africa to Europe, makes it easy, in my viewpoint, for trafficking to occur. And in some countries, you can also look at their history. So for example, in the UK, we see many young people trafficked for domestic slavery 
I think the UK actually has more uh, children and young people trafficked for domestic slavery uh, from Africa than any other European country. And for, 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 for us at Africa, we can also look at where these young people are coming from. Most of the young people traffic for domestic slavery in the UK are from Nigeria. They're, they're young people from other countries, but most of them by far are Nigerian young people, the Nigerian children. And that's because of the history between Nigeria and the UK. So Nigerians have been coming to live in the UK for a long time, from the 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, established. So there's a, a, a growing middle class of Nigerians in the UK. And it's middle class Hello? people. Can you hear me? Yes, can I can you hear, hear you now. Yes, we can. It's, me, it's middle Lisa class. Lisa from it's, Portugal. Excuse me? It's me. Who is speaking? Lisa from Portugal. Hi, Luisa. Hi. Thank you for joining. Can we Sorry for being late. Okay. It's middle class young no people. Worries. It was middle class young people that, that, that actually would normally use children as domestic servants because it's cheap labor. Then, of course, uh, the Mediterranean has become the hub of the new slave trade. In the, when we talk about the old transatlantic slave trade, where people from Africa were trafficked to the new America. Now we're seeing a different uh, dimension where Africans are being trafficked to Europe via the Mediterranean Sea. This is the new slave trade. I want to highlight something that people might not be aware of. There's a high number of Nigerians being trafficked from Nigeria across the Sahara Desert to Libya, and then through the sea into Italy or Malta and so on and so forth. But we know that it's a very, very organized crime. It's, you know, they, they, uh, there's a mafia. I would call it the African mafia. If you want to be more specific, you can call it the Nigerian mafia. And they're well known in Italy. And these mafia groups, they're very well organized and, and they have different... Uh, different players in the mafia who help to move children, who help to move women into different countries uh, in different parts of Europe. The role of the mafia is very uh, important. And in fact, if you, I think that if you want to address this trafficking issue, we should focus on the mafia because you know there's a lot going on with the mafia. The relationship between some sending countries, the transit countries, and receiving countries, for example, we've talked about Niger and Libya. We haven't talked about Mali or Burkina Faso, and these are transit countries. A lot of people will go to these countries before getting to Libya or before getting to Morocco, before going on the sea to Europe. Uh -huh. uh, and of course, uh, People are saying that, look, the reason why trafficking is occurring is that we need to look at it from the point of view of corruption and inequality. And, and corruption and inequality driven by post-colonialism. And one of the, one of the indicators of post-colonialism is that we have many uh, European companies coming to do business in Africa. But when they leave Africa, they don't pay taxes. They take all their proceeds with them. And so Africa suffers. They make money, but they don't actually invest the money back into Africa. So the money, the, 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 you know, there's capital flight, which means that, you know, it, 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 that leads to inequality. And like I said before, multidimensional poverty, which also fuels uh, human trafficking. Those are some of the key issues I wanted to explore. Nelly? OK. Donc, euh, quand on parle des questions clés qui caractérisent euh, un peu le phénomène, il faut savoir que euh, pour le trafic à des fins d'exploitation sexuelle, euh, on évoque souvent le lien italien. Il faut savoir que l'Italie, c'est le premier point de contact des, des migrants avec l'Europe, des migrants qui viennent de, de l'Afrique par la voie euh, 
euh, de, de la mer. Et donc, du coup, après l'Italie, donc, euh, ils, les, ils, ils, vont, euh, ils vont dans d'autres pays euh, d'Europe. Mais le, le contact avec l'Italie, en fait, c'est aussi un, un point de faiblesse pour les migrants parce que c'est là aussi qu'ils peuvent avoir beaucoup de recrutement euh, pour euh, les fermes d'exploitation. Euh, il faut savoir aussi que les fermes noires sont considérées comme des produits euh, exotiques, comme une marchandise exotique en Europe. Donc, euh, malheureusement, euh, voilà, c'est comme ça que ça se passe. Euh, il y a aussi un autre facteur qui est l'angle nord-africain. Donc, la proximité de l'Europe, euh, donc euh, tout ce qu'est l'Afrique du Nord, c'est vraiment le point de sortie pour les migrants euh, qui se dirigent vers l'Europe. Et euh, donc, c'est aussi un, un, un territoire qui expose beaucoup les migrants parce qu'ils sont en transit, qui les expose beaucoup euh, à, aux trafiquants. Euh, quand on parle de, vraiment de, de contexte un peu local et, et du coup on évoque ici le lien entre Nigeria et Royaume-Uni, il y a des liens historiques euh, et il y a beaucoup de jeunes euh, qui viennent du Niger qui sont exploités exploité à des fins domestiques au Royaume-Uni euh, et euh, donc euh, il y a tout ce qui est la traite euh, la traite euh, négrière donc si à l'époque on, on, on voyait beaucoup de de, de trafic de, de l'Afrique vers les États-Unis, voilà, on voit ça. Maintenant, il y a beaucoup d'exploitations, de, il y a beaucoup de mouvements vers l'Europe pour avoir aussi euh, l'exploitation à des différents points. Euh, Et tout ça ne se passe pas vraiment sans, sans la mafia, que ce soit africaine ou nigérienne, du coup, comme Déby vient de voir. Euh, parce que ce sont des cercles euh, bien, très bien organisés, même euh, qui euh, participent à toutes les étapes euh, du trafic, que ce, que ce soit le recrutement, la transportation, l'exploitation. Donc, sans cette personne, sans, sans cette mafia, rien n'est possible. Donc, c'est vraiment un crime très bien organisé. Et bien évidemment, donc, il y a des relations entre les points d'origine des transit et d'accueil en Afrique et en Europe. Et il y a des pays qui sont euh, juste des pays euh, de transit, comme le Mali, par exemple, ou la Mauritanie. Il y a des pays qui sont les deux, qui sont des pays d'origine, mais qui sont aussi des pays de transit. Et tout ça expose incroyablement les, les migrants à, aux trafiquants. Il y a aussi un autre facteur qui est un peu... Euh, euh, une combinaison de plusieurs dans la population. Il y a les, les inégalités croissantes dans le monde. Et il y a aussi euh, le, euh, le postcolonialisme. En fait, euh, il y a un, un contexte historique qui pèse et qui impacte bien évidemment euh, tout ce qui se passe aujourd'hui et, euh, et qui, euh, qui expose vraiment beaucoup de, de personnes à, qui, qui deviennent des de, de victimes hein, des de, êtres humains. Euh, et euh, donc tout ça, c'est ce fait qu'aujourd'hui, euh, donc euh, l'Europe, elle, elle continue à être un, un, un des, une des destinations principales pour euh, euh, où euh, la traite ou l'exploitation se passe. Okay, go on, Debbie. Thank you, Nelly. So let's look at uh, how traffickers control their victims. So this is this 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 uh, is based on our work at Africa in the UK. So some of these young people, when once they're trafficked, uh, you know, uh, of course there's physical restriction. They're locked up, maybe uh, in a in a in a house or they're, they're in a brothel where they are not able to escape. Uh, you know, so there's physical restriction of movement. For children, especially children, or even women who are trafficked for domestic slavery, uh, there's a threat to report them to the authorities. You know you're here illegally. If you do A, B, C, D, and E, we will report you to immigration. They're going to put you in detention. They're going to lock you up. And then they're going to deport you. So of course, um, when you've said that to young people or, or to these uh, young women who have been trafficked, it makes them compliant. They do exactly what you've told them to do. 
I, I think some, somebody somebody has their microphone on. Who, who has their microphone on? Listen up your microphone. Then, of course, uh, this is uh, this is a, a phenomenon that's become very common across uh, different countries. And also, uh, we have uh, someone with the micro open, and then uh, okay, so now it's better. Yeah, so you have to go back, Nelly. You've changed the slide. Thank you. Go back yeah. to, to yeah. Go back yeah. yeah. Go back to the okay. Yeah. Yeah. So bon. Yeah. Control of victim traffickers. So uh, the use of juju, where young women are made to swear an oath at a shrine that they will not uh, betray their traffickers, that they will not uh, uh, talk to the authorities, they will not run away, uh, especially whatever money they owe, they will pay it. So we see uh, the use of juju is becoming very common all over. We see many examples in the UK where young people, uh, once they are rescued, they're so afraid of talking about what's happened to them because they're afraid of the juju. And I remember some years ago, we had a, a young girl who had been uh, trafficked uh, across Europe. She ended up in the UK. Finally, she was rescued. And she had a, a, a child who had autism. And she was, she was extremely devastated. She was so sure that her child had autism because of the juju that she swore to. So the juju is, if you, if you, if you betray me, something terrible will happen to you or members of your family. So she thought her child had autism because she betrayed her traffickers. That's the power yes. of, that's the power of juju. Now, uh, this, the Stockholm syndrome, we see that when, uh, especially when children have been trafficked at, from a very, very young age, and they've lived with the traffickers for so many years, to the point where even though they've been exploited, they've been abused, they still see these people as part of their family because they don't know anybody else. And so I, I recall a, a, a case where a young girl was rescued and the case actually went to court and she was extremely, she was very worried, she was very uh, bothered. I said, what, what, what's wrong with you? Why, why you, you know, what's bothering you? And she said, oh, you know, these children uh, that these, these people have, what's going to happen to them? These are like my, my sisters, they're like my brothers, you know? I don't want anything bad to happen to them. If, they, if their parents go to prison, something will happen to them. So uh, that's, that's another way that victims get control. So the Stockholm Syndrome, it means that traffickers can do anything they want to the young person because they know that the young person is emotionally attached to them. And of course, there are other ways of uh, manipulating the young person by, uh, you know, uh, ma making them to do things they don't want to do, by, by deceiving them to doing things that they shouldn't do. The, the one that we are, we've seen a lot of as well is where young people are forced to do things because if they don't do it, the trafficker will say to them, we know where your mother lives. We know where your family lives in Nigeria or in Ghana. If you don't do what we're asking you to do, we will go back to your village. We will kill them. And of course, if you hear that as a young person, you will do whatever your trafficker wants because you don't want them to, to harm or to kill your family. So these are the different ways that traffickers can control the victims. Nelly? May, may I just add something? One of the things that we uh, found with Nigeria's I'm sorry, victims... Can, can... Elizabeth, I'm very sorry. Can we address all the questions after the presentation? Of course, of course. Yeah, thank you very much, because we are about to, to, to finish it, so we, all the questions will be happy to address after it. Thank you very much. 
Donc, euh, quand on parle du contrôle des victimes par les trafiquants, il y a plusieurs moyens de le faire. Et donc, il y a la, donc, le moyen le plus souvent utilisé, c'est la restriction physique euh, de mouvement. Ça veut dire que les, vies, les victimes sont euh, clairement euh, enfermées euh, dans, dans des différents appartements ou lieux sans vraiment accès libre ou euh, mouvement libre à travers les communautés ou les villes. Il y a aussi les menaces de dénonciation des victimes aux autorités. Donc, euh, très souvent, euh, ça a lieu aussi euh, quand les victimes euh, sont impliquées dans, dans des différents cas frauduleux. Donc, ils ont peur d'être punis. Donc, euh, c'est une menace qui marche très bien. Et il y a aussi un contrôle psychologique, une prise au piège par la dette euh, ou le bondage ou aussi le joujou, euh, ce que Debbie vient de dire. Donc, c'est... Euh, ça veut dire que les victimes euh, sont mises sur le compteur. Euh, donc, ils disent, et, et les trafiqueurs leur disent, voilà, tu me dois, on a payé pour toi 30 000 dollars ou voilà, n'importe quelle autre somme. Et donc, tu me dois ça. Il euh, y a aussi euh, tout ce qui euh, euh, joujou. Donc, ça veut dire que c'est quand un membre qui est très proche à, à la famille de la victime euh, qui peut être euh, enlevé. Et donc, c'est aussi... Un, une, un des cas qui marche très bien pour euh, pouvoir retenir la victime et, et la faire, euh, faire ce que, ce que le, le trafiquant euh, a besoin. Et il y a aussi le syndrome de Stockholm, c'est un syndrome quand la victime, elle prend, elle s'attache beaucoup à son trafiqueur euh, et euh, carrément parce que c'est aussi souvent dans le cas des jeunes enfants euh, qui euh, ne connaissent pas beaucoup de personnes, qui ne connaissent peut-être pas leurs parents ou n'ont pas de, de famille. Et les seules personnes euh, qu'ils connaissent, qu connaissent sont des trafiqueurs. Et donc, c'est pourquoi ils s'attachent à cette personne. Et souvent, donc, des billes dans, dans sa, sa pratique, il a eu des cas quand les, les victimes euh, passaient déjà dans dans les, la cour pour, euh, pour pouvoir défendre le cas. Du coup, il s'inquiétait beaucoup. Euh, qu'est-ce qui va se passer au trafiqueur euh, Il va être euh, mis en prison. Et qu'est-ce qui va se passer à tous ces filles qui, qui restent derrière euh, et, et, et tout ça. Il y a aussi la, la manipulation des victimes. Euh, donc, euh, la, être aussi une manipulation euh, par, euh, disons, euh, je ne sais pas, tu me dois ça, euh, si tu me fais ça, je, je vais... Je vais, je vais t'offrir ça, je vais te donner de l'argent, tu vas pouvoir être libéré, euh, je ne sais pas, disons, dans combien d'années ou combien de, de jours, et, et, etc. Il y a les menaces de représailles contre la, la famille, donc ça veut dire qu'une victime qui souvent a une famille quelque part, le trafiqueur, il connaît quelle est sa famille, donc il connaît très bien tout le contexte et euh, il ne s'empêche pas de vraiment la manipuler en disant que voilà, si toi tu... tu euh, tu fais ce que tu veux, euh, ta famille, elle va subir ça. ça. Donc, il y a le contrôle de la famille à travers euh, sa famille. Go on, Debbie. Uh, Debbie? Somebody, somebody has their microphone on. <laughs> uh, uh, let me see. Can you check your microphone? I think you came, you came last. So, check your microphone. Is the, oh. the the green button at the top of yeah. the screen? Yeah. Press it and press it, and it will turn red. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so let's look at some of the effects of human trafficking. And when we're looking at the effects, we're not just looking at the effects on the victim. Uh, that's important for the effects on the sandy countries. There are effects on on the transit countries and their effects on the receiving countries. So let's start with the victims of, of, of trafficking. What is the impact? What are the different uh, forms of uh, ways that they're impacted? Of course, we know that there's physical abuse, the long journey through the desert, the slavery in Libya, the journey through the Mediterranean Sea. Then, of course, they get to Europe, and all the other issues that they have to go through, the physical abuse. Some women, uh, even the big, the big traffic, they are actually sexually abused on the way, on route. They are sexually abused on route. Uh, and of course, when they get to Europe, they are also sexually exploited. The psychological and emotional impact of trafficking can be 
uh, uh, it cannot be uh, overemphasized. Be uh, when we, when we, some of the young people we, we work with at Africa, they, they, suffer, they, stop, they suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Uh, I don't know, Nelly, if you'll be able to translate PTSD in French for post-traumatic stress disorder. There's high level of trauma from all the different... Hello, Debbie? Of, yeah? Can you Debbie, hear me? we lost you. You lost me? Yes. Now oh, yes. I'm, yes, now yes. We, we, we okay. have you. <laughs> okay. So all the different forms of abuses that young people uh, experience lead to a high level of trauma and psychological problems. And it can take many, many years many years if at all possible for them to recover okay now in terms of the selling countries for a high level of organized trafficking to be going on say in a country like nigeria means that there, there's a lot of crime and criminality behind it and a high level of crime and criminality puts many people at risk of harm but then, if you have a high number of people who are being trafficked from your country, that is a lot of brain drain. Uh, people talk about brain drain. Hello? Yes, people talk, yeah, people talk about, about brain drain in terms of voluntary migration. But brain drain is also in terms of involuntary migration or forced migration or even human trafficking because you're losing people. You're losing a lot of young people who, instead of being carefully employed, are working as slaves in other countries. In terms of transit countries, and when we talk about transit countries, we're looking at countries like uh, Niger or Libya or Mali or Burkina Faso. Again, you know, all of a sudden, you, you have all these people in your country, even though they're there for the short term but there's an impact on the country's resources because then, you know, the, 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 the same facilities that your own people are using, they're also using those facilities. Or we can see an increase in crime and criminality. So for example, we can see more prostitution on the streets. And uh, some years ago, uh, I don't know if, you're, if you'll be able to translate Nelly, but some years ago, I went to uh, Burkina Faso because we had a project in, in the north of Ghana, working with street children in the north of Ghana. And a lot of the young people were running away to Burkina Faso. So we went to do uh, a fact-finding mission in Burkina Faso, and we went to Ouagadougou. When we got to Ouagadougou, we realized that a lot of the young girls were working uh, in prostitution. So we got somebody to take us around many of the brothels in Ouagadougou. And I saw with my own eyes so many young girls. They were little, little girls. I mean, these were like, either they were still children or in their late teens or early 20s. They were young girls, many of them, many of them in these brothels. When we went to the High Commission, the Nigerian High Commission, to say, what's going on here? they gave us the figures that look, there's a high number of Nigerians in Burkina Faso, maybe about 100,000, and 80% 80, 80 of this population of Nigerians work in prostitution, whether they are victims of trafficking or not. That is a high number for a transit country. I was just talking about young people from one country we have not looked at the overall figure. So actually, transit countries do suffer a lot from trafficking. The receiving countries like Britain or France or Italy, Belgium, there's the economic impact, there's the social impact. Uh, if you go around Gardiner in Brussels, you will understand the social impact. And of course, trafficking also leads to other crime. You know, I've talked about the mafia. That is also a problem for receiving countries like Italy, for example, a huge problem because the, the people who are trafficking in people, they are also engaged in other criminal behavior like drug trafficking. So the impact of human trafficking is huge. It's huge on the victims, on the sending countries, on the middle countries and on the receiving countries.
Nadé. Thank you, Debbie. Et donc, si on parle de, de l'impact de la traite des êtres humains, euh, il y en a partout. Donc, il y a bien évidemment l'impact sur les victimes même. Euh, donc, suite à cet abus physique, sexuel, psychologique et émotionnel, euh, les victimes souffrent incroyablement, donc euh, physiquement déjà, sexuellement. Mais il y a aussi euh, une incroyable pression, euh, un trauma psychologique et émotionnel euh, qui, euh, donc, il y a un syndrome euh, euh, post-traumatique euh, que les personnes ont, euh, les victimes ont, et ça leur prend vraiment des années et des années pour pouvoir récupérer leur bonne santé euh, psychologique, émotionnelle et physique. Euh, pour les pays d'origine, on parle essentiellement de la dépopulation, euh, de la criminalité et de la fuite des cerveaux parce que euh, les personnes qui sont recrutées, qui deviennent victimes, bah, elles quittent le pays et euh, donc il y a donc physiquement et, et euh, mentalement, intellectuellement, c'est le capital qui parle qui part de, de pays et qui, plus, qui ne sera plus là et qui ne pourra pas contribuer au développement social, économique, euh, culturel du pays. Euh, il y a aussi euh, un incroyable impact euh, pour les pays intermédiaires, pour les pays de transit, euh, comme la croissance démographique, euh, bien évidemment en court terme, parce que souvent euh, c'est des, des courtes périodes que, que les victimes restent dans ce pays. Et il y a aussi la criminalité euh, agrandie, et accrue euh, sur, les, sur les rues, euh, dans les localités de ces pays. Et euh, du coup, au début, elle a elle a, elle a présenté un exemple d'un projet où elle était à Burkina Faso, à Ouagadougou, euh, avec un projet euh, qui concernait euh, les filles euh, de, euh, au nord de Ghana, euh, parce qu'il y a beaucoup de filles qui, de, de Nigeria qui se prostituaient au Burkina Faso, euh, et qui, euh, donc, il y a à peu près 90% des de, de, de filles qu'ils ont identifiées, en fait, qui étaient qui travaillaient dans la prostitution et qui étaient amenés d'une manière forcée euh, ou pas. Et donc, tout, euh, beaucoup de, de, de ces fils euh, ont, ont terminé à être dans, dans la gare du Nord, euh, dans les, à proximité des gares du Nord à Bruxelles ou dans n'importe euh, quel autre pays européen pour, euh, voilà, pour euh, les mêmes euh, fins. Euh, juste pour vous dire à quel point, en fait, euh, ce, ce phénomène, est, euh, il peut prendre ampleur et comment est-ce qu'il peut être organisé. Pour les pays, euh, pour les pays d'accueil, bah, c'est essentiellement l'impact économique et social, c'est aussi le niveau croissant de la criminalité, tout simplement parce que c'est ce business, c'est un business bien évidemment euh, criminel et donc euh, ça, ça implique aussi des, des comportements euh, euh, criminels qui euh, qui sont voilà qui sont poursuivis par la loi et euh, ce n'est ce n'est pas bien pour euh, ni pour les victimes ni pour les pays euh, d'accueil ni pour les pays de transit ni pour les pays euh, de d'origine donc euh, tout simplement pour vous dire euh, à quel point ce ce phénomène euh, il est sérieux il doit être pris au sérieux et doit être traité de même manière Go on, Debbie. Thanks, Nelly. So let's now, so uh, we have two more slides to go and then we'll take questions. So uh, let's look at some of the challenges uh, in addressing human trafficking from Africa to Europe. So uh, I want to start by uh, talking about what we are all aware of, which is the growing uh, right-wing populism and the focus on illegal uh, migration and the focus on illegal migration whether it involves pieces of trafficking is irrelevant everybody is seen as an illegal immigrant and that um, we're seeing a lot of that in, uh, in italy uh, we're seeing uh, some relevance in here in the uk where uh, a lot of NGOs are complaining that even though we have a modern slavery act in the UK, the government's commitment to reducing the number of migration means that a lot of victims of trafficking are actually uh, not being seen as such. And even if they're seen as such, they're still not being treated as well as they should be treated. So we're seeing that, uh, you know, 
happening across across Europe. Another key challenge is what's going on between the European Union and Libya. Because the EU has paid uh, Libya some money to help stop people getting on the sea. So what's happening is that the Libyan Coast Guard, they will go on the sea and if they see any boat, they will intercept the boat and they will return the people to Libya. When they return the people to Libya, a lot of these people end up being uh, in detention or in some cases being sold to uh, human traffickers. So we're seeing a lot of people who are being returned and instead of maybe sending them back to their countries or treating them in a nice way, they go into detention or they're sold to traffickers. I've already talked about this. I want to highlight it because it's a key challenge. As African people, as the key drivers of human trafficking, Africans are responsible for trafficking Africans. And it's important that we understand that that was happening. And when we talk about the African mafia or the Nigerian mafia, we're talking about black acts. We're talking about AA. We're talking about the madams. The madams are people, women, who were victims of trafficking, who spent many years as victims of trafficking, who now they pay their debts to their trafficker and they're now free and they themselves now go into the business of trafficking. So they go back to their villages to traffic girls to Europe. These people are the drivers of human trafficking. And if you want to stop trafficking, as far as I'm concerned, we need to focus a lot on them. There's also a lot of, a lack of collaboration between different African countries. A lack of collaboration between Nigeria, Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, Libya, and all those other countries. So yes, of course, there are things happening, but it's not enough. It is not enough to deter, uh, to, especially because of the free movement of people we have in West Africa, in the ECOWAS subregion. Then uh, when young people have been trafficked and they've been exploited, and either they're able to run away, or they're rescued, it's still happening that many authorities, like the police, like immigration, they don't believe these young people. So I've called it the culture of disbelief. So even if young people are presenting evidence in court that this is what happened to me, some judges will still say, no, that is not trafficking. No, you were not trafficked. No, we don't believe you. And that makes it very hard for the young people who have gone through so much to actually get justice. Of course, uh, there's a lot of focus on women and girls. And in the UK, for example, we have services for women and girls. Yeah, There are no services for boys or men. It's like we don't think men are being trafficked, but men are being trafficked. And we've seen the figures, 21% of victims are men. So that is an issue. Corruption, until we address corruption in Africa, corruption that leads to multi-dimensional poverty, that leads to all forms of inefficiencies, until we address um, corruption, we can't stop trafficking. And of course, um, uh, 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 there's issue of uh, the, uh, the, those of us who are working in this sector, what exactly are we doing to help young people? So there are agencies who are genuinely working to safeguard victims. There are also agencies that, they, 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 you know, I mean, they, they, they're there, but we don't really know what they're doing. <laughs> so are they saviors or are they, what are they doing? We don't know because there are no projects, there are no programs. There's a lot of uh, radio jingles. There's a lot of... Uh, uh, noise making on social media, but we don't see how they're helping. And this last point is extremely important. The diaspora, the African diaspora in Europe, we are not working in collaboration to address trafficking, the trafficking of our own people, 
there is there's very little being done across Europe. All the work being done, Europe wide, very few is done by African diaspora organizations. The bulk of it is done by non African organizations. That means that we cannot use our expertise, our knowledge to help address the problem across Europe. So we are able to work in our individual countries. We are not able to work across Europe. So these are some of the challenges that we're seeing in addressing, victim, uh, in addressing human trafficking from Africa. And until we address these issues, we are not going to solve the problem of uh, human trafficking. Nelly. Yeah, thank you very much, Debbie. Donc, pour parler des défis euh, de la lutte contre la traite des êtres humains en Afrique, il y en a euh, plusieurs. Et comme vous savez, il y a vraiment beaucoup de populisme de droite euh, en ce moment en Europe. Euh, et euh, donc, ça fait que euh, les migrants sont un peu des boucs émissaires. Euh, et très souvent, donc, on ne fait pas des distinctions entre l'immigration clandestine et la traite des êtres humains. Et donc, euh, les, les victimes de la traite sont très souvent des voilà traités comme des migrants clandestins irréguliers et donc on les renvoie tout simplement euh, dans, dans les pays d'où ils viennent. Euh, dans l'Union européenne et donc la connexion libyenne, donc comme vous savez très bien, donc euh, il y a beaucoup euh, donc cette approche sécuritaire elle fait que euh, des euh, des, euh, des il y a beaucoup de contrôle des frontières de la part de la Libye, surtout par la mer, et donc toutes les personnes qui sont qui sont sauvées dans la mer sont renvoyées à Libye dans un contexte qui est vraiment déjà à la base qui est très dangereux avec un conflit présent. Euh, les Africains sont aussi des principaux moteurs de la traite des êtres humains. Et on parle ici de la mafia, de la mafia africaine comme la Black, Black Axe, Ai ou Madame. Donc tout ça, c est, c est, c est, ça doit être aussi pris en compte et éradiqué à la base pour pouvoir vraiment traiter, euh, traiter euh, le sujet. Parce que si on n'adresse on pas, euh, si on n'arrête pas le, le travail de ces cercles, euh, on ne peut pas vraiment... Euh, remédier au problème. Il y a aussi le manque d'efforts de collaboration pour lutter contre la traite des êtres humains en Afrique. Ça veut dire que les pays euh, d'Afrique travaillent moins ensemble pour pouvoir avoir une réponse cohérente euh, collective. Et il y a aussi la culture de manque de confiance euh, de la part des institutions. Et ici, on parle beaucoup euh, des, euh, des manques de surtout des manques de confiance de la part de la police ou de, du système euh, euh, juridique qui, au lieu de vraiment écouter les victimes, euh, bah, les, les rend vraiment n'a pas de confiance et euh, au lieu de, de les accorder des services dont ils ont besoin, la protection dont ils ont besoin, bah, ils les renvoient directement dans les cercles et euh, c'est encore pire. Et, et il y a aussi, donc, euh, il faut savoir que les garçons et les hommes sont aussi des victimes, euh, contrairement au mythe euh, répandu que c'est juste les femmes euh, qui souffrent à cause, de, à cause de la traite. La corruption, elle alimente beaucoup euh, le trafic d'êtres humains, ça veut dire que le manque des systèmes, euh, des, de, le système juridique corrompu, la police corrompue, euh, bah, tout ça, ça contribue à alimenter euh, le trafic. Euh, il y a aussi le secteur anti-traite. Donc, ça veut dire que beaucoup d'organisations, de structures qui, euh, qui prétendent à travailler pour sauver euh, les victimes, bah, qu'est-ce qu'elles en font exactement Personne ne le sait. Donc, euh, il n'y a pas vraiment de réponse concrète. Euh, il y a aussi le manque de collaboration entre les diasporas de tous les pays. Il y a très peu de réponses de la diaspora et ça, c'est aussi très euh, euh, ce que Déby voulait euh, euh, souligner. Euh, les pays, et beaucoup d'organisations de, de la diaspora travaillent euh, au niveau de leurs pays respectifs, mais il n'y a pas de réponse euh, euh, au niveau euh, de l'Europe. Il n'y a pas de réponse unie, de réponse cohérente, coordonnée, euh, qui puisse vraiment euh, avoir de l'impact euh, au niveau euh, plus, euh, plus grand. Ok, Debbie, Merci. go on. Merci beaucoup. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, uh, we have some recommendations to make. Firstly, 
the issue of poverty in Africa is a growing problem. And until we tackle poverty, we cannot stop trafficking. And that's, that's just, there's nothing the EU can do, but people will always be trafficked. And those who are not victims of trafficking will be victims of irregular migration or smugglers who would end up uh, deceiving them. So a Marshall plan to tackle poverty is needed. It is not enough to work in isolated countries like Edo State in Nigeria or in Niger or in Libya. It's important to look at poverty as a pan-African problem and to address it as a, as a pan-African problem. So we need a Marshall Plan to tackle poverty across Africa. We also need uh, a holistic EU-Africa solution. The solutions that we are seeing in Africa, initiated by the EU, benefit only the EU. A good example is Niger. So um, in Niger, the EU has uh, paid the Nigerian government to help stop uh, illegal migration to Niger. But a lot of the people, the Nigerians, who are smuggling people from Niger, from Agadez to Libya, that's a business for them. It's an economic biz uh, uh, you know, uh, business. And, that's, and they're making a lot of money for it. And don't forget that Niger is one of the poorest countries in the world. So they're making a lot of money to support themselves, to support their families. And then one day, a law was introduced, and that's it. You couldn't smuggle people anymore. You couldn't move people anymore. And that's affected so many people in Niger, directly and indirectly. So we need an approach that will benefit EU, but that will also benefit Africa, not just the EU, which is the current situation. The mafia, and I've talked a lot about the mafia until we address the mafia issue, or people who uh, claim that they can, they can find jobs for people in Europe, but they are actually deceiving people and ending up trafficking them. Until we can deal with those issues, there will always be traffickers ready to, to traffic people. Currently, there is no African response to trafficking. We need an African commission on anti-trafficking to lead on, the, on, on uh, anti-trafficking matters across Africa so that there's a central point where the issue of trafficking can be addressed, not just to Europe. Don't forget that we have Africa has been trafficked to the Middle East, Dubai, UAE, Qatar, Oman. We have Africans being trafficked to Southeast Asia, Malaysia, Thailand. We have Africans being trafficked to South America, Costa Rica, Venezuela. We have Africans being trafficked within Africa itself. So it's an African problem, and we need an anti-trafficking commission that will help to lead on it. It, where children are concerned, the main reason is because very few African countries have child protection systems or structures. We don't have systems that protect children from abuse. We don't have systems or structures that protect children from trafficking, from child exploitation. It's important that we start to put all these structures and systems in place. We even have instances where some countries are not registering birth. When people are given birth, these children are not registered. They don't have birth certificates. We need to we need to solve all these protection systems so that you know we can do more to protect uh, children. The Libyan problem is one that needs to be looked into very carefully. When when uh, Libyan coast guards when they intercept boats on the Mediterranean Sea, the people on the boats are put into detention. They're locked up. If they're not locked up, somehow they actually end up with traffickers until we solve the ongoing political problem in Libya, 
we you know we will always have people being trafficked but then the, the the journey is a lot more precarious the journey is a lot more dangerous for those people who are being trafficked and my last point in terms of recommendations is this when we are intervening in africa we should take account of local issues and intervention should not just be about what will benefit europe a good example i've already talked about this in relation to niger but also edo state edo state in nigeria people say has the highest number of victims of sexual exploitation in africa to europe most of the women you see on the streets of rome on the streets of brussels and paris in Amsterdam, who are being, uh, you know, pro who are prostituted, are victims of trafficking, and most of them are from Edo State. So the government, the EU, is working with the government of Edo State. The UK government is working with the government of Edo State. Many countries are working in Edo State. Do you know what's happening in Edo State now? The traffickers now see that there's so much being done in Edo State. They are moving their operations to other states. So, so Edo State is now, uh, it's now, you know, things are getting back to normal. But now traffickers are in Delta State, which is a neighboring state to Edo State. So it's displacing the problem, it's not solving it, it's displacing it. The reason is that all these interventions are from abroad. They're not interventions that have been put in place uh, in collaboration with local people. There are interventions that are top down, you know, they've been imposed. And what we are seeing is a displacement of the problem, not a solving of the problem. So those are my recommendations uh, in order to address trafficking from Africa to Europe. And I, I just say thank you all for listening. Thank you very much, Debbie. Uh, donc pour conclure, il y a quelques recommandations uh, de la part uh, de Africa pour pouvoir uh, remédier au problème. Donc uh, il y a le problème de la pauvreté uh, qui est, est le plus uh, gros problème qui est si on n'arrive pas à le résoudre, bah, les gens vont continuer à être recrutés, uh, être attrapés dans les cercles d'exploitation de, des trafics. Donc on a vraiment besoin d'un plan Marshall pour lutter contre la pauvreté et réduire la migration irrégulière d'Afrique vers l'Europe. Il y a aussi euh, le besoin d'avoir une approche globale entre l'Union européenne et l'Afrique euh, qui puisse profiter euh, aux deux continents d'une manière égale. Euh, il s'agit vraiment d'avoir euh, des politiques euh, qui sont respectueuses, des contextes qui sont respectueuses des besoins des, des différents pays et pas seulement euh, d'un acteur euh, particulier. Il y a le lien avec la mafia qui doit vraiment être euh, interrompu euh, parce que les opérations organisées euh, qui sont organisées par, par cette, cette mafia, bah, ce sont des, organisants, euh, des, des opérations qui sont très difficilement identifiables et euh, donc il faut vraiment avoir, euh, avoir euh, une approche euh, un peu cohérente, une approche un peu multidisciplinaire pour pouvoir vraiment rompre, rompre ce Cercle. Euh, on a besoin d'une commission africaine contre euh, la, la traite des êtres humains, chargée des questions de, de traite des continents. Pour le moment, euh, il y a beaucoup de pays qui travaillent sur des questions comme le Nigeria, le Niger, euh, Burkina Faso, mais il n'y a pas vraiment d'une réponse euh, panafricaine, d'une réponse euh, qui puisse vraiment euh, résoudre ce problème euh, d'une manière euh, globale. Et il y a aussi euh, des systèmes et des structures de protection de l'enfance euh, dans les pays africains qui, qui doivent euh, être mises en place, améliorées, euh, parce que si, euh, si un enfant n'a pas des certificats euh, euh, de naissance, ben, il est enregistré nulle part, il est, com il est comptabilisé nulle part, donc c'est est un enfant qui, qui, euh, qui est une opportunité excellente pour les trafiqueurs parce que il euh, n'y a pas de il a pas de personnes il n'y a pas de problème donc euh, voilà c'est assez facile à, à gérer des personnes qui sont non enregistrées qui, qui sont nulle part qui sont qui sont pas qui n'ont pas d'identité 
Il faut aussi s'attaquer aux problèmes du bien, ça veut dire sauver les victimes qui sont en détention en ce, en ce moment, euh, démanteler les opérations des marchands, de d'esclaves, de, de, de résoudre cet impasse politique parce que euh, souvent les, les victimes donc euh, qui sont attrapées dans la mer, bah, elles sont euh, remises dans, dans ces centres de rétention, de détention et, et donc elles sont traitées comme des migrants irréguliers qui, qui voilà qui, qui sont en, en en conflit avec la loi, mais ce sont des victimes en fait de la traite et qui ont besoin d'un appui et ont besoin de, de services totalement différents. Et finalement, les interventions en Afrique doivent aussi prendre en compte des problèmes locaux, par exemple le Niger, l'état d'Indo au Nigeria. Euh, et donc, euh, ça veut dire que on a besoin aujourd'hui dans la construction de nos partenariats entre l'Europe et l'Afrique d'avoir euh, le même pied d'égalité euh, dans, dans les politiques. On doit avoir vraiment une approche qui puisse répondre aux besoins de chaque continent et de chaque contexte. Euh, donc aujourd'hui, euh, l'Europe elle travaille beaucoup avec l'Afrique, mais on a besoin un peu d'échanger les actions afin de vraiment euh, répondre et, et de sauver euh, ces, ces personnes qui, sont, euh, qui souffrent de jour à jour, euh, qui sont des personnes qu'on peut côtoyer, euh, que ce soit à Bruxelles, sur les rues de Rome ou de Paris ou de n'importe autre euh, pays euh, européen malheureusement euh, qui sont des victimes et euh, on peut les voir mais on peut pas savoir qu ce qui se cache derrière parce que le trafic c'est une crime caché qui est très très difficilement identifiable et on a besoin tous euh, des, des efforts conjoints euh, pour pouvoir remédier à, à ce problème donc euh, débit merci beaucoup pour euh, pour ta, ta présentation c'était excellent on a appris beaucoup j'espère que vous aussi et euh, Thank maintenant you. On n'a pas beaucoup de temps, malheureusement, mais on a des questions. Donc, euh, je pense que euh, c'est aussi très important pour nous de pouvoir entendre ce que nos, notre audience euh, aujourd'hui pense de, de ça. Et je vois qu'il y a des, donc des commentaires. Euh, okay. Donc, euh, avant que je, je check notre, notre inbox, euh, je, je ouvre euh, la session des questions-réponses. Uh, so, Sebi, thank you once again for your excellent and amazing presentation. You learned a lot, I hope, um, our guests as well. So, I open the floor for our sessions on uh, questions and answers. And in the meantime, I will check the, the, will check the chat box uh, for the questions left, uh, left here. And then, um, uh, go on, who wants to uh, Some questions and comments to make, just uh, uh, feel free. Okay, so there's a question, Elizabeth. Elizabeth says, What is juju? So, um, yeah. let me try my best to explain what that means. Um, in many African societies, people believe uh, in the power of uh, the ancestors or some uh, spirits to be able to do things so you know so supernatural powers in this instance in relation to trafficking uh, the traffickers and even the people who have been trafficked don't forget that they're coming from the same community so uh, i'm trying i'll try me brief nelly so you can you can translate They're coming from the same community where they believe in the power of, of supernatural, in, in, they believe in supernatural powers. So, in this instance, in relation to trafficking, in, 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 actually, this is mainly from Edo, Edo State in Nigeria. There are witch doctors who can perform all forms of uh, traditional rites. And part of this is to say that, look, if you're going to Europe with this person and they're going to pay for your travel or they, they promise that they will look after you when you get to Europe, you also have to promise that you're not going to go to the police or do something that might hurt them. So you have to swear You must swear to the juju, to the to the god or to the whatever it is that uh, you know they believe in. 
that if you betray your trafficker, things will happen to you. Sometimes the young, the, and they're usually girls, they say, okay, you have to leave some of your personal things in the shrine, in the juju shrine. So it could be your nails, it could be your, your, your personal clothing, like your underwear, it could be something to do with your menstruation, something personal so that the juju can reach you wherever you go. So the juju uh, is the, uh, the supernatural power it can reach you wherever you go. And if you betray your trafficker, the juju can reach you. That's why I said earlier that one of our young girls, when she had the baby, she was very devastated because she thought that Juju had reached her and her son. That's why the son had autism. I hope I hope that's clear, Elizabeth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I will I will try just to um, give a very brief uh, translation of what you said. Okay. Uh, uh, Elisabeth, elle a demandé qu'est-ce que c'est Juju. Donc, euh, il faut savoir que euh, beaucoup de euh, personnes euh, en Afrique, hein, ils ont euh, normalement, donc, il y a aussi une croyance dans, dans, le, dans le pouvoir euh, supranaturel. Et donc, euh, c'est ça qu'il que y a beaucoup de personnes qui, euh, qui mettent en service, en fait, euh, ce type de, de croyances ou voilà euh, qui, qui font des différents rites un peu traditionnels et euh, donc très souvent ce sont des personnes de confiance et c'est ce type de personnes qui justement disent voilà si tu vas en Europe euh, bah, écoute, il faut pas aller euh, à la police il faut pas dénoncer il faut pas faire ci il faut pas faire ça sinon euh, c'est du tout qui va venir qui va te, te pénaliser euh, Etc. Donc c'est pourquoi Déby, quand elle a eu le cas d'une jeune fille qui a eu son enfant et donc du coup qui, euh, donc le cas était traité par la police, elle s'inquiétait vraiment beaucoup parce qu'elle croyait que c'est du loup qui va venir et, et, euh, et euh, donc elle va subir et elle va avoir des conséquences néfastes pour, pour son enfant. Ok, okay. Merci. so we have also um, a question from Baba Garfal, uh, who is a journalist in uh, Senegal working as well on the same question. Uh, yeah. And he's asking how the corruption could fool the trafficking in human beings. Cor corruption, for, uh, Monsieur, uh, merci beaucoup. Corruption Baby? was, yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Corruption yes. was trafficking because corruption leads to inequality. Corruption leads to more people living in poverty. For example, if uh, somebody steals money that is meant to be used to build a school in a village, so that the children in that village can go to school. If somebody steals their money, and so there is no school in the village, those children cannot grow up to be properly educated. So they're probably possibly just sitting at home, and they are easy prey for traffickers. And we know that a lot of traffickers, they go to the villages to take uh, little girls or boys to you know, deceive them into coming to Europe. So if, there, if, if, if people steal money that is meant to help people, especially children, then that leads to poverty, it leads to inequality, it leads to deprivation. And of course, it means that the people who are affected can become prey to human trafficking. Nelly, tu comprends? Yes, um, yes. Donc, euh, pour répondre à Babacar à votre question euh, relative à 
comment est-ce que le trafic des êtres humains est lié à la corruption, ben, il faut savoir que la corruption, elle amène à, aux inégalités, elle amène au fait que euh, les différentes personnes euh, ont les différents niveaux de vie. Euh, il y a beaucoup de personnes qui, euh, qui vivent en pauvreté, en extrême pauvreté des fois. Euh, par exemple, euh, si euh, quelqu'un dans, dans le cadre d'une communauté euh, prend l'argent qui est destiné à, 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 mettre, à scolariser les enfants, à ouvrir une école, euh, bah, du coup, ces enfants, ils n'auront pas, euh, pas des possibilités d'aller à l'école, d'avoir une éducation, d'être occupés dans la journée, euh, d'être éduqué, etc. Donc, ce que euh, les fait vraiment une... Euh, ça, ça les rend vraiment vulnérables en face des, des trafiqueurs qui attendent vraiment des, des opportunités pour venir euh, chercher ces enfants, les amener, les, leur promettre des, des, des beaux projets en Europe ou n'importe quel autre pays de leur promettre un Eldorado qu'ils vont, qu vont avoir une éducation, qu'ils vont, ils vont avoir un job, qu'ils vont avoir, etc., etc., plein de choses. Et donc, du coup, ça peut vraiment les amener dans ce cercle, tout simplement parce qu'il euh, y a ce type de structure qui manque et qui est capital, en fait, pour le développement euh, d'un enfant. Ah. Um, I also have uh, Shaytata who wants to make a comment uh, on Selective Media Broadcast. Uh, Shaita, yes. you have the floor if you are with us. I would like also to make a comment after. All right. Um, I just wanted to okay. thank um, Debbie on uh, the idea of uh, full factor. And uh, she did mention about the rule of the, of the Africans being responsible for this. And I also thought that there is another pull factor that is responsible for, which is the Western media broadcast. Okay. Uh, they, what, they do, what they do is that they usually, when they are broadcasting their programs, especially the ones that can be accessed in Africa, what they show is usually that the Western world is paradise. You know, people don't... <laughs> You know, people live a very, people are almost in heaven, you know, if you have the picture <laughs> of heaven here. Yeah. And this yeah. is one of the reasons that uh, probably will pull some up. Even the rich people that you will see them uh, are ready to sell their stuff to be part of this society. And yeah. this is what makes them to become victims of uh, human trafficking because then there yeah. are people who are always ready to tell them that we can do things to facilitate your coming to Europe and they become victims of this. Absolutely. The consequence of this is that many of them end up regretting why they ended up, for example, in Europe, America, etc. Yeah. Um, and that is why I, I had wanted also to look at the last comment, since we do not have time, is the idea of the exuberant lifestyle that some of us in the diaspora will live when we come. Mm. Uh, sometimes we do not also paint the picture that we have to pay bills, that we don't even have better homes in Europe. When we get home for holidays because we have saved money for holidays, we <laughs> rent a car, for example, from Port Accord, a big jeep, and then we take to the village. And then we deceive these people that, uh, you know, there is a tree in Europe where people just have his money and life has just changed. Yeah. And this is a very another pull factor. I don't want to call it push. Uh, yeah. um, that contributes into human trafficking. So the diaspora's yeah. role in this case, I would recommend that we should also try to be realistic and avoid deceiving people. I know that some of them go there in order to stimulate and, and, uh, and uh, maybe deceive people to sell their plots and give them more money so they can invest and build their lands and build their houses before leaving in order to, to take these our vulnerable people and frustrate them when they come abroad. These are the two comments. Uh, there are a lot, but because of time, I want to give yeah. them for It was really thank an interesting topic. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tete. Yes, can I also uh, make a you. quick comment? Yes, please. Yes? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Could you present How yourself I... for? Yes, my name is Luisa Maria Gonçalves. I'm from Portugal. 
I'm a senior inspector from the Immigration and Service uh, and Immigration Service, and now I'm working at the Constitutional Court. Okay. I would like also to say that one of the things that we noticed that have changed in the last uh, times is that the victims, especially those coming from Nigeria, more and more they are addicted to drugs. So the mafias are influencing the victims not only with juju and all the things that you have said that are really important, but also putting them in addictions of drugs. So more and more we need to be in an approach, a multidisciplinary approach to fight this mm -hmm. because more and more the criminality around the trafficking of human beings are also uh, involved in the addictions of trafficking of drugs and involving the, the, the victims in drugs addictions, which opens a very new way of fighting this because they have one more problem that is a huge problem. Okay? Yes. To create dependence of these uh, uh, victims on them. And also one thing that you already raised the question, but more and more it's becoming a huge problem, is the anti-trafficking saviors that you really do not know in what side they are fighting, if they are fighting against the trafficking or if they are involved in the trafficking. Yeah. And even for those that uh, are fighting really in the trafficking, sometimes it's difficult to know the difference. So more yeah. and more, this is becoming difficult for us. Excellent. That's okay. a good point. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Miss. Uh, sorry, I didn't catch your name. Louisa. Louisa. Louis. Louisa. Okay. Louisa. Thank you very much, Louisa. Yeah. Thank you very much. I mean, and um, to to the previous speaker as well. This is a very uh, important point because I was trying to save them. I just put everything under the better life syndrome. The better life syndrome that. Yeah. Anything to do with Europe is great. I must have it. You know, once I get to Europe, my life will change. And whether that's been fueled by Western media or whether it's been fueled by Africans themselves that go home and they pretend that they're living in heaven, is still the better life syndrome. And in terms yeah. of the drug addiction, uh, that's not surprising because the mafia that I talked about, they are also involved in drug trafficking anyway. So they're involved in drug trafficking, they're involved in human trafficking, and it's, it's easy for them to use drugs in addition to juju to control mm -hmm. the activities, uh, to, to control their, their victims. So yeah. yes, it's a new development because usually they will rely on juju. However, I didn't say something, I, I was trying to save time. This is a big subject. We can spend. This is a conference in itself. The mm -hmm. the the king of Benin City, where most of the victims come from, uh, put a course a course on traffickers last year. He said, if anybody traffics anybody from my kingdom, that they're cursed. So uh -huh. so now, and and he also said to all the juju people that I talked about, they should stop. They should stop doing what they're doing so now okay. traffickers are no longer using juju as as before they're looking for other ways of controlling their victims okay and drugs is a key is a key one because they are already trafficking in drugs for many of the organized people organized crime the mafia they are already trafficking uh -huh. in drugs so it's easy for them to also use drugs to, to control okay. their victims, yeah. Okay. Hey, Debbie, can I say something? Yeah. Yes, please. Hi, um, hi everyone. My name is MC Jenkins. I work for the um, Home Office. I'm the National Community Engagement Lead for Nigeria in the Home Office. Um, thanks for putting this together. Um, I just have one or two questions because one of the things that um, we're trying to do is to actually raise more awareness about home office supporting vulnerable people like victims of modern slavery, human trafficking. And I know Debbie, you talked about obviously um, um, earlier that the agency is not really providing support for victims. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware that we have started 
training all our enforcement officers um, mm. in terms of identifying um, vulnerable people even when they go out on their normal day job. Okay. So it's now on the um, front burner for us to yeah, ensure that's cool. that um, that is because I mean one of the things is when officers go out now and they identify mm. vulnerable people um, mm. it is their responsibility to first deal with the vulnerability as long as you know it's it's not a um, the person there's no harm to anyone it's for them to deal with the vulnerability as in the individual first before they now start talking about the um, the immigration status or the reason why they, they were there now I, 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 I then have a question um, that with all the work that has been done and the amount of money that has mm. been spent in the last few years, let me focus mm. on the UK now, um, mm. have we seen any improvement in terms of tackling um, this menace, one, and mm. two, do we, apart from Africa, do we have other organizations or agencies that so provide support for victims in the UK? Yes, of course. Uh, as thank in, you very much. Thank as you. In, as as in, in, you know, victims from Nigeria who are oh, victims okay, okay. Of, or from Africa who are um, being trafficked, either, trafficked. you know, who have been trafficked and who are also victims of modern slavery. And okay. I would be interested in that as well. Definitely. Thank you very much. Yes, I mean, the UK government has done a lot uh, compared to, in my view, many other countries in Europe and also, uh, you know, previous uh, UK governments. For example, we have the Modern Slavery Act, which is a very comprehensive legislation. Uh, we have other uh, uh, you know, policies in terms of victim support. We have policies in relation to how victims will be looked after. There's no, there's no doubt about all that. The problem is that many uh, of us in the NGO sector, that's not just Africa, but other NGOs that work with victims of trafficking, so other big NGOs that work with victims of trafficking. The problems that we have is that in terms of implementation, a lot of the time, victims are still suffering. So for example, this morning, I had one of Africa's young people called me and she told me that, okay, so the judge, the court, the appeal for her immigration case that she had about a month ago, the judgment had been passed and you know, the judge said he believed her story. And this is 2019, this young girl, uh, was rescued in twenty in twenty fourteen. Are you listening? From twenty fourteen to twenty nineteen, this young girl had been through so much. It's a long time it, to wait. Exactly, and it affected her mental health significantly to the point that uh, on a number of occasions she actually tried to commit suicide. Okay, um, um, Debbie, yeah. you know what, let, so, let us take that outside. So, I would be interested in that because we need to start building a picture. Yeah, because what I'm for... trying to say is that the government has the policies and the legislation, but in reality, victims are suffering a lot. And I believe in many European countries as well, it's the same scenario we are seeing. In relation okay, I, I, to, I'll, I'll speak to you yeah. after this conference. Okay. There's another yeah. question you asked. Um, let me quickly answer that. Yeah. And that's and that's in relation to. Uh, I can't remember now. Sorry, I didn't write it down. Your no, second I, question. I, I said since the implementation, that yeah. what have we seen any? Uh, I, have we seen any changing? Yes. Any yes. Yes. Yeah, so we we're seeing improvements, but it's it's slow. It's very slow. And whilst, whilst it's slow, a lot of young people are suffering. So okay. we're seeing young people, most of the young people that we're seeing are historical victims. Right. The young people who were trafficked five years ago, 10 years ago, you know, four years ago. Wow. Who are now being, maybe they're now being rescued or they're able to escape after so many, so many years. 
And the key issue for those young people is their immigration. They don't want to be returned to a country or to people, maybe their family members who were involved in them, in them being trafficked. But the government is saying, no, okay, in fact, in some cases, the government will say that, oh, we believe you were trafficked, but there's no reason why you cannot go back to those states. Okay. And so there's so many issues in relation to how we're dealing with victims all over Europe. It's not just in the UK, all over. So that we're not putting the best interests of victims at the forefront. Okay. What is at the forefront is fighting my in, in, um, um, immigration. That's mm. at the forefront of most European, and that that's to the detriment of victims of trafficking. Okay. Um, like I said, I'll I'll have a chat with you after. Yeah. The Definitely. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your question and. Um, and for for the this comprehensive and really full answer, Debbie, it's it fascinating. Yeah. Okay, thank so you. do we have maybe the last question? If not, um, okay, I see that no other questions in the chat. Uh, so I would like to thank uh, our speaker, Debbie, uh, yeah. for this amazing presentation and your time and. And comments and thank all our participants as well for their interest and for staying with us and complex, very complex uh, phenomenon which needs to be addressed. Um, and we, as the African diaspora, should really join our forces, our in the expertise, and our willingness uh, to help these people across uh, Europe and, and Africa, and should. Um, apply all the possible means, uh, advocacy, uh, in order to really, really, really have an impact, a positive impact on the on the policy level, or on the level, on the operational level, at every every level possible, uh, in order to save lives. Because this is uh, one of our main missions, basically, also to provide the, the support to enhance the capacities that the diaspora have in order to, to create impact. So thank you very much again. Uh, and just a brief, um, a brief update on the ADEPT. So all the, the um, uh, information support which they be kindly shared with us uh, will be shared afterwards uh, with the webinar recording with all of you. And uh, please uh, feel free just to write us and if you have any some questions or comments if you want to be put in contact with that you have uh, her contacts uh, on the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, and then um, from the side of ADEPT, we also will uh, issue a few of uh, um, vacancies very soon uh, about the web and communication assistant. Uh, we also had uh, the polls and advocacy manager. So we will have a few uh, job offers which will come uh, for many more information uh, from our side. And then uh, we, uh, we would like to thank you all again for, for the webinar. Uh, and uh, the next one will be at the end of uh, August. So we are working now on the topic and we will inform you um, uh, later. One. So thank you very much all uh, and uh, stay in contact and have a nice day those who uh, will have. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Nelly. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yes, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.